everybody, and welcome to Tales from the Fog. I'm your host, Casey, and with me, as always, is the amazing and wonderful Veronica. Hey, everybody. How are you doing? I'm doing pretty good. And tonight we have our special guest for, what is this, three or four years running? It's been a minute. Yeah, uh, it's our annual Midsummer Scream preview with Rick West. How are wow, you doing? hey, how are you guys? Hey, man, it's really good to see you. This is, we're doing it gorilla style tonight. <laughs> yeah. This is awesome. New location, new... Everything. <laughs> well, that implies that it's going to be like it's that going. for from here and forever. We're recording in an, an unusual space, something a little bit more um, geographically neutral to everybody because we all live so very far away. So um, we're at my mom's house. But um, <laughs> I'm really happy just to be in the same room with both of you. Yeah, yeah, this is awesome. And it, it's fitting to be in the trenches doing this gorilla style because Midsummer Scream, we're in the trenches at this point. We're, yeah. we're literally one month away today. Yeah, it's recording. I was thinking about that, that we have a month left. A and then month. My heart sank. I was like, oh, no, we only have a month left. Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, my God. Want to trade? Um, <laughs> no. No. Well, you we have to think about an input payoff situation. This is true. Because, like, our input is, I mean, not that the payoff isn't fantastic, but yeah. our input is only so much. Yeah. And we're going to get out so much. But there for you, you, you have so much more on the line, but you get so much more out of it. It's pretty crazy. And yeah. And to know that we're going into year four. Like, where did the time go? It's it's like we were just recording at your place last. I think it was 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 I with Ted? Maybe with, yeah, with you, did you guys, yeah. right? And we were just talking about midsummer did. stuff. And yeah, we did one over Skype. Like the year just gone mm-hmm. like that, right? And so here it comes. And it was all ideas and just this kind of like yeah. sort of blue sky stuff where we'd like to do this. We're thinking about yeah. doing that, and it was all ideas. And now it's it's and all here we cool. go. And now yeah. you're announcing everything. It's pretty crazy, yeah. We're we're literally we're we're this is it. This is we have now entered the final stretch, and and stuff is getting pretty real at this point, yeah. So what's going through your mind as you go through checking all those boxes? Um, just you know, there are a million moving targets for all of us on the team at this point. Um, we just kind of have our noses to the mm-hmm. grindstone. We are pretty uh, we're, we're pretty focused on everything. And for me, at least, I find that if if I step back and think about the totality of everything, it's like, holy shit, this is a lot of stuff we got to do. <laughs> yeah. um, because we are literally, we, we are more than, we more than double the size this okay. year of the show. We have the entire convention center this year. And so that's freaky in itself. So I find that if I kind of put my little blinders on <laughs> and like start just like I do one shit at a time is what I say, you know, just uh, one little thing, one little fire, one little thing I got it. And suddenly magically it all comes together. How does that happen? How does it magically magic? <laughs> um, we, we have a fantastic support team. You know, we, there's, there's uh, four of us in the executive team mm-hmm. and then we have a support team of about 20 And then that's going to trickle down to our amazing frontline white bat team Mm -hmm. that this year we are looking at about 350 white bats. So it's an entire, it's an army of people that we have that really make Midsummer Scream a thing. And we are indebted to all of them. And uh, so we just, we each do our own little thing. We coordinate with each other. And uh, it kind of just magically gels together and knock wood. Um, <laughs> it's been pretty smooth for the past almost four years now. It's incredible so. to see just peripherally how all of those moving parts come together to make this gigantic event. I mean, it didn't yeah. start small. Yeah. It started big and has only gotten bigger and bigger and bigger. Yeah, we had 8,000 came our first year, and this year we're planning for over 30,000. Good God. So more than 15,000 a day are going to come. That is wild. And it's taking up the entire convention center. The right? entire thing. Yeah. Wow. Yeah, so the show floor has more than doubled in size. So mm-hmm. you have, what, halls A, B, and C? Yeah, all of them. Yep. And yeah. all the rooms also. And then upstairs and downstairs of the concourse. And then the main ballroom, of course, yeah. again. Yeah. Whoa. So we uh, so the show floor has uh, we're at this point we're over three hundred and fifty vendors. Okay. Wow. Um, and Hall C is going to be Hall of Shadows again. Mm-hmm. So same location for Hall of Shadows as last year, right. except we've jammed more stuff in there this year. <laughs> um, we've got almost twenty attractions this year in there. Yeah. And some of these haunts are freaking like legit big. Like some are like sixteen hundred square feet. Wow. Oh my goodness. They're like legit sized attractions and. How these haunters are doing it, I 
Better you than me, man. Because <laughs> yeah. I'm telling you, I don't have that kind of energy. There's but a dedication there, yeah. that they put into that is unmatched. Yeah, it's unbelievable. Everybody is just really excited and stoked to be part of it. And uh, yeah, and then we have like, uh, last year was challenging because remember we only had, because we were sharing the space with somebody. We don't like to yeah. share mm-hmm. anymore. So we're just going to take the whole damn thing from now on. They don't like sharing um, with us either. Yeah. yeah. So, like, who are all the weirdos? <laughs> yeah. So anyway, so we were stuck <laughs> last year on the upper concourse. Yeah. Yeah. Which made it hard with I, all the lines. I, I say and... upper deck, but you know, I just giggle like a upper... little kid inside. <laughs> I like Every upper time deck. I say upper deck. But we, the upper concourse was ours last year. And dude, that was really rough because yeah. the, the walkway is like less than half of what yeah. we have downstairs. But that's the cards, the, those are the cards we got dealt. And so we, we did it and we did it okay people last year with that. Anyway. Yeah. Um, and people had a good time. But this year we've got upstairs, downstairs, we've got all three halls, we've got the main ballroom, which is going to be our main yeah. stage again, mm-hmm. with 2,000 seats. That's also going to be the epicenter of our Grim Grinning Gala, which is the Midsummer Scream After Dark party, the Haunted Mansion party. Absolutely themed. Yeah. So it's going to be great. Um, and let's see, our second stage, we have two stages this year, main stage, which is 2,000 people, that's upstairs again. Mm-hmm. And then our second stage is going to be downstairs this year, and second stage this year seats about 800 people. Is that going to oh. be in the same spot around the corner? It's going to be. Right it's when you walk right. into the convention center. It's off to the right. Yes. Yeah, over by that bar. Yeah. So yeah, yeah, past that, mm-hmm. and yeah, yeah, and so kind of like where the food little food area is yeah. there. Yeah. So and so second stage is eight hundred. That's that's nothing good, to sneeze at. Yeah. So wow. that's a good size stage too. And uh, in fact, most of our theme parks are moving to stage two. Uh, oh, interesting. This year, um, as we, we we've learned that as as we get. Was as we as we get bigger as a, as a show as a convention, we obviously bring in bigger panels and presentations that are going to demand a really big audience. Yeah, you know for these things, and so we have to like shuffle these things. And of course, we love, we absolutely love our partnership and friendship with the theme parks. Um, but it just makes sense logistic wise to move because some of them don't do like the full hour. So yeah. it just it, it 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 makes it easier for everybody. Us, especially as planners, yeah. Yeah. to have them on the second stage, and so the uh, going forward, the only the only um, after this year, the only two parks that are going to remain on stage one um, are going to be Knotts and Universal, just okay. because of the, the size of the crowd that they that, they, they yeah, command. That makes sense. Yeah. And they put so, on a big performance, and they do big productions, and yeah, yeah. And, and I mean, they all do. Everybody loves everybody. Right? I mean, we Queen love, Mary. Yeah, we love all these. Of course, time. they do. Yeah. So, um, but we just you know, it's one of those. Growing pains, things you know. It's a good problem to have. Absolutely, that we have these bigger things coming online, and so we give them a shot on the main stage to see how they do. And uh, yeah, so it's just uh, crazy pants time. That's fascinating because that I mean everything that you were describing about just those two stages is just one small part of this entire thing that's happening. Yeah, but that alone takes so much bandwidth to organize and schedule, and you know. What the tech is going to be like, what it's going to be like mm. setting up the rooms. I mean, just doing one room for one day would be a monumental thing to overcome. And you've got the entire convention center for two days. Yeah, it's pretty crazy. And and even now, I mean, we're not like just sitting back and saying, "Okay, let's just stare at our watches and wait." <laughs> we we still we're still putting um, a couple panel presentations together that we have not announced yet. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So I mean, literally, like thirteenth hour, we're going to be announcing, you know, some more things. So do you have? So. Do you ever come across um, guests or anybody who's like on the fence where something you release or announce? It makes them go, yeah, that's that's the reason that I want to go, or that's going to put them over the edge. I think so, because I think Midsummer kind of like is something for everyone, yeah. right? So there's always, it, it's interesting, because we will announce things on social media, and we figure, okay, well, we know that we, we know that our Haunted Mansion panel is going to be a, a huge draw yeah. of the weekend, right? But then we announce something like this year, I have the, you know, the spooky themed bars, you know, Southern California. Mm-hmm. And people really were into that yeah. too, because it's a very niche thing. Yeah. But there's enough people that are like, "Oh, dude, that's legit. That's really cool. I got to see that one." Mm-hmm. So there is something I think for everyone. And speaking of that, our friends Zombie Joe's Underground Theater—they're coming back again this year. They do Urban Death. Well, they have just created a new thing that they call Urban Death for Kids, oh. and so and it's freaking awesome. I mean, if you guys are listening to this, by the time the show airs, they have like one or two weeks left. If you can. Get up to North Hollywood and see it because it's amazing. Take your kids because they've created a 
kid friendly. I'm going to do it in quotes because some <laughs> kids may not like that. Yeah. But yeah. I, I would say for haunt people, for people that are into haunts, I would say like five and up. Like wow. at, at, at midsummer. So what's going to happen is I'm getting part before the horse. So <laughs> um, at midsummer, we're going to alternate their shows. They're going to do an urban death, and then they're going to do urban death for kids. That's great. And it Don't is mix them amazing. Up. <laughs> yeah, that's going to be an awkward car ride home if you do. Yeah. But uh, no, it, it's <laughs> mom. No, um, what was that? Yeah, it's 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 phenomenal. I went and saw it this last weekend. And it was the first time I've ever like given them a standing ovation. I was wow. so excited oh, because God. it's all of the creepy little. It's the same template. It's the, the little vignettes, you know. That mm-hmm. for a few seconds the lights go out, you hear a noise, lights come on, ooh, lights go out, starts all over again, right? Mm-hmm. But it's all like really creepy stuff, like monsters and just like kind of funny, kind of gross. Some gross. There's boogers and farts and things, but it's just like <laughs> yeah, yeah, everything yeah. that appeals to me, right. you know, it's <laughs> exactly. a perpetual 13 year old. But it was really, really good. And it was funny because I, I've gone and David Marklin's gone. And each time there's been like maybe 10% of the audience is kids. It's all adults, you know, but, yeah. but everybody's just like giggling like kids. And, and it is genuinely, it is so well done and it is so, just like spooky and funny and unexpected, that's going to be a don't miss thing also. So again, we're running the entire swath from kids all the way to, you know, not kids for things like the regular urban death, which will be also part of that. And then of course our haunts in the hall of shadows, which we'll get to, Mm -hmm. but uh, yeah, it's just, what a crazy menagerie of stuff that that we're going to bring this year. So much. Yeah. It's amazing. I mean, the show floor alone is, it's almost too big to to take it in. It's crazy. It's, it's crazy. So, so like we we did a walk through um, a few weeks ago, and just standing with the air wall open from Hall B because you know last year Hall B was where all the vendors were. Well, Hall A, which is what we had the first two years where we yeah. did the show floor, and a third of that was the Hall of Shadows. And the big beautiful curtain. <laughs> That's right. That entire thing is vendors. This year. So you walk down, you go down the escalator, and you go into the show, and you straight ahead, as far as you can see, it's vendors, and then diagonally off to the left, as far as you can see. It's like a like a super Target or a super Walmart, you know, type thing, <laughs> as far as you can see. And we just stood there going, how in the hell are we going to fill this up? I, I guess we say this every year, you know? Yeah. But, but you it's like, holy you. crap, how do we... It's full again. Yeah. It's full. Um, last year, because the show was very popular... Uh, we did sell out, and, and so the aisles were, were fairly crowded with folks on the yeah. show floor. We're aware of this, um, which is why, um, side note, that's why we as the executive team last year uh, called it quits as far as ticket sales. Oh, yeah. We could have continued ticket sales, but for us, it's not the quantity of people that we can get in the building and money mm-hmm. we can make. Yeah. It's the quality of experience for our guests. And we were like, okay, it's getting kind of full. What do you think? And we all looked at each other and said... Let's call it. That's it. Because we want people to have a good time. Yeah. If it's so crowded that you don't come back, then we've really done a disservice to the community. You yeah, know? there's someone who's missing out. Yeah, that. yeah. So we don't we don't ever want that. And so, obviously, some people aren't going to like any crowds. I get that. Oh, I'm sure. one of those people. Oh, but yeah, it just happens <laughs> yeah. to be my sandbox. So, you know. <laughs> um, but this year, we've actually widened the aisles to 15 feet. Wow, so we, we've really added, good. it was like 13 feet last year. Mm-hmm. So we've added two more feet to each aisle, which is going to help alleviate. Plus, we've opened it up entire show, yeah. you know, show floor. Yeah, you're not really going to have more stuff. So we really think that that's going to be a huge crowd suck that way. Plus, yeah. we have all the breakout rooms and the concourse. So there's definite people sucks in all directions this year. Very cool. Yeah. There's so many places for people to go. I mean, there's, I know that you've kind of done this by design, but there's no way that really that you can do it all in one day. It's impossible. There's no way you can do it in two days. Yeah. Um, there are going to be some very hard choices this year. And uh, that goes for me, too. Because yeah. in, in programming everything, you know, we're moving a million miles a minute. And then I realize, oh, wait a minute. I'm doing a panel. Oh, no, I wanted to see this. And oh, wait, wait. Wait, no, I've got to be able to see this. And, you know, and so, like, I've been going back and forth with, with Markland going, like, <laughs> Dude, I want to see that. We can't have my panel like right, right here, you know. So we've yeah. kind of done that shuffle. But even for us, then there's hard decisions to make. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so for guests, yes, this is you may be cursing and shaking your fist at us, but but by design, it is going to be some uh, 
some serious tough love this year. So which panel are you hosting, or has it not been announced yet? And it's been announced. I'm doing the, um, on Saturday, I'm doing the uh, spooky-themed bars of Southern California. Okay, so you're hosting so, that. Yeah. Is that looped into the tiki thing? So, no, there, we, we, there's no, there's not really any tiki representation on that one. Okay. Um, but it was, it, so we're going to have the Cauldron. Mm-hmm. We're going to have Beetle House okay. in, in Hollywood. We're going to have Phantom Carriage. We're going to have the Fourth yeah. Horseman. And we're going to have the Lost Spirits Distillery. Fantastic. And so when we came up with this, we're like, this is really cool. And then we're like, well, who would be like really good to host this? And it was just kind of like, <laughs> well, <looks> like <laughs> I kind of have that pedigree, you know. Yeah. And so I thought, and it was gonna, one of those. It was one of those situations where you're like, well, are they going to have I'll samples for everybody? I wish. I wish, but, but by bylaws, we're not allowed to have any outside food or drink. Aww. In the convention center, so yeah, bummer. So, but we'll talk about the libations, but uh, no. So that's that's going to be the panel that I do this year, and uh, we will, um, yeah. So I normally do like one of the big panel. I usually do like a big theme park panel. Yeah. That's not happening this year. Um, I, I would have normally done the haunted mansion fiftieth anniversary mm-hmm. panel, um, but here's just a little behind the scenes production stuff. I don't want to go into gory details. But um, I was actually, I, I put the Haunted Mansion panel together, and it's like the dream panel. It's going to be a phenomenal presentation mm-hmm. to start everything off on Saturday. Um, but at the same time, I was working for the past year on another really big panel that I was going to take. Mm-hmm. So I gave the Haunted Mansion panel to Doug Barnes of the season pass. Okay. And oh, nice. he's going to do yeah. great with that. Um, well, as production goes, about a month ago, mine fell through. So oh, now I have serious panel envy with, oh. with, with Doug. I, I've already told the team, like when we say our when we say our welcome to everybody on Saturday, I'm just gonna like sit on the edge of the stage and not leave while the haunted mansion panel begins. That's what my my strategy is. You're gonna That's make right. yourself part of it. Yeah, yeah. To hell with that. So, but no, Doug's gonna do great. Um, it's a bummer that mine fell through. Maybe next year it'll come to fruition. Maybe not. Um, these things happen yeah, in production. Yeah, Mm-hmm. And uh, we just we just roll with it and go with it, and uh, it frees me up to to do more and see more, and uh, I'm very excited then to be hosting the the spooky bars panel presentation. That one will be, be great. Fun. Dude, so when, great. when you're hosting, do you feel like like you're still working, like you've been working this whole time to build this event, or do you feel like you finally get to breathe and enjoy it and be present and take in? the panel that you're working on? Um, when I do a panel, um, it's actually, it's like taking an hour break because you realize that no matter what happens, no one's going to interrupt you. <laughs> it's really, yeah. Like, no one's going to be like, dude, you have to get to the Hall of Shadows for, you know, whatever reason, or, dude, okay. we need you in the, bo-, you know. Like, your no, walkie's off. It's like, nobody's going to bother me while I'm sitting on stage talking to my guests. Because you're working. Technically. So, there you go. So, that's actually, it's some um, very... It's very kind of like Nirvana, actually, moment because the rest of the entire four day stretch that we're there, we are nonstop. Yeah. I mean, we're nonstop from you know wee hours of the morning until usually after midnight. What time do you get there as as the upper management team? Sure, the executive team. We will probably there will be probably a couple of us um, boots on ground late Thursday night, which would be the what the thirty first, I guess it is. Uh, whatever, how many mm. days there are in this month? Sure. The last day of this month, um, and then uh, they're going to be taping things off. And th- that's if they can get in there late. Otherwise, crack of dawn, like like probably five a.m., they'll be on the show floor, um, starting to tape things off on the first. Mm-hmm. I will probably arrive around ten o'clock in the morning for Hall of Shadows uh, load in, and it is just nonstop. Then we will probably have people doing build until close to midnight that first night. Uh, the second day it all starts again, probably at about six or seven in the morning. Sounds about right. I'll get there probably about eight or nine mm-hmm. and probably about nine. And then, uh, you know how it is. You guys come in, the K brigade comes in the second day yeah. Yeah. and starts doing things in the afternoon, uh, three o'clock on day two of load in lights are out in the hall of shadows. So people can start doing their show lighting and all the tweaking. Mm-hmm. That's a favorite moment of mine when the lights go out and the hall of shadows becomes yeah. a thing. It does yeah. feel really good. It's awesome. Um, and, uh, then it just all starts early the Saturday morning. You know, we get there probably, I think Marklin probably gets there at about six or six thirty. Claire is usually right on his heels. And then I will show up probably at about eight or so. And, uh, away we go. 
What's going through your mind on that Saturday morning when you walk in? God, I'm tired. <laughs> <laughs> um, it's excitement. It, it's adrenaline because no doubt by the time that we get there and start really prepping for a uh, 10 a.m. open, uh, there will be guests probably already in line outside oh, yeah. on, oh, yeah, on, sure. the, on the on the outside concourse. And um, it's, uh, it's a hell of a thing. It really is. You feel a huge sense of responsibility. Yeah. Uh, you walk. I, I. My day will probably consist of first walking through the Hall of Shadows to make sure that all the haunts are setting up. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, all of our haunters are are supposed to be ready to rock and roll by about nine o'clock because doors open for gold bats and media mm-hmm. uh, at ten a.m. Yeah. And so, and then general public is at eleven on both days, and uh, it just it it goes very very quickly. How do you process? All of that, everything that you've been building, and it happens in these these brief two days that go by in a flash. Like, how do you how do you get to experience all of that and kind of like comb through everything? You don't. It's all post. It's all post. Uh, you just it, it comes and it is so intense when it's here. Um, and this year, it's been especially intense just because it's over twice the size. Um, when it happens, it just, it, 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 it happens. It's like when you're in an earthquake, right? When it happens, you're like, oh, shit, it's happening. <laughs> yeah. And then after it stops, then you go, ah, oh, that was earthquake. You know, right. So it's, same, right. so it's the same kind of thing. Yeah. Like once it hits, it's like, okay, it's here. We got to do this. Mm-hmm. And we do this. And afterwards, it's kind of like, oh, my God, we did this. You yeah. know, yeah. and then for the weeks and sometimes a month after that, I experienced midsummer through podcasts through watching YouTube videos, seeing pictures on social media. That's really how I experience Midsummer every year. It seems like the only way that you really could because you only have your perspective, but you're also on your walkie and you've got all these fires to put out and all these people to make happy. It's pretty crazy. All these masters to serve. Yeah. But it's your, like, you made that. Yeah, it's intense. It's really intense. Um, My favorite thing in the world is usually what happens is Saturday, right before doors, right before we open, um... I know that once it is open and alive, there will be no breaks to be had at all for any of us on the executive team. So I usually like go grab like a breakfast sandwich or something at the at the you know the place in the lobby there. Yeah. And I will um, I will sit and and actually this happened last year right after doors. Um, I would grab a sandwich and I'll sit there and I will watch just thousands of people streaming in through the doors for about ten minutes while I just. Had this one moment, one last moment where I'm eating, having some coffee, and watching all these people come screaming in. They're very excited. And then it's go. Yeah. And it won't end for me until probably close to midnight on Sunday night. We're the last ones in the building. So you're the ones that that turn off the light, look back, and you everyone got your stuff. We are the last, yeah. We're the first and we're the last, yeah. What's the come down process like? Um... It's relatively easy for me. I'm like, <laughs> I'm so done. I'm tired. And, you know, I just want to chill and have a like drink. And, for a week and... um, you know, I, I, I usually like don't get out of bed the next day and then I'm good. You know, oh, that fast. so yeah, it, yeah, it's, it's, um, cause then he gets the alert. Hey, 2020 is, uh, oh my God, meeting is next week. We've are, <laughs> and that's no joke. I mean, <laughs> midsummer is about an 18 month process. So we're already, we're already planning 2020 stuff. Oh, I'll bet. So it, it's a it's an overlapping process yeah. that we're already well into 2020 stuff. So that is yeah. mind bending to think about. You're already that far ahead as far as your planning. Oh yeah, and, uh, it's crazy. So I can't imagine you're allowed to talk about any of that. Huh? No, I mean, <laughs> I, we'll, we'll, I think what we did last year, which surprised everybody and made everybody stoked, was at the end when we said goodbye to everybody at the last panel of the on Sunday. Yeah. Um. We we usually will. We decided we'll put up like behind us as we walk off the stage the dates for the following year. Yeah. So I would expect to see that this 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 time again because we have our dates. And, yeah. Yeah. And uh, yes, we have the entire convention center again. So I imagine yeah. that you will basically from here on out. You can't yeah. go small. So just, yeah. Yeah. You yeah. can't go back. No, you can't go back. So we we've, we've opened the Pandora's box, <laughs> and uh, it's exciting and it's terrifying and it's just. Uh, Packed full of all sorts of Halloween goodness. That how many uh, How many years off do you think you'll outgrow the Long Beach Convention? You know, we have a long way to go. I think for yeah. now. Yeah, it, it's just it, it's a matter of you know uh, the only the only issue that we know for sure is on the horizon 
are the, was it 2026 Olympics or whatever it is? Yeah. Oh, We've already right. been told that the entire center is like booked. Like, like we're, it's not going to be available. Wow. So, you know, oh, uh, if, if there's a midsummer still then, cause you never, you, know, you never know, right? Mm-hmm. The, you don't know what tomorrow brings. Um, either we're going to take a year off or we're going to have to find a new home. And so that is something that we do talk about, but we talk about it in far and away. Well, yeah. Tense, you know, <laughs> but as planners, we would be remiss not to have that at least blip on our radar. Yeah. So we are aware of that. Uh, other than that, you know, uh, barring any horrible, you know, fate that befalls the Long Beach area or, you know, as far as I know, that is that's home for the foreseeable future, and nice. we're very happy there. And we know that the fans love it there, yeah. and uh, we enjoy our partnership with the city of Long Beach. It's definitely cooler than uh, some other places. <laughs> it just works. Like the the size of the space, like it's huge, but it's it's manageable, and you can get from one place to it's, another pretty easy. It's huge, it's but like it that. still feels intimate. Like well, it's, it's got personality, a, yeah, right. Yeah, yeah. That was one of the reasons that we went with, you know, four years ago. That's one of the reasons we landed on Long Beach. Is because it was very personable. It, it, it's it's got personality. It's a close proximity to hotels and cool restaurants. Yeah. Um. And so that's really and and that's why we really kind of chose Long Beach area. We we fell in love with that venue and uh, Gary uh, Gary Baker, our executive uh, producer. He uh, already had a relationship with the Long Beach Convention Center folks oh. because Gary's company, the, the you know Call Brothers, they do the all the AV stuff. Um, they do shows there in that area, yeah. so they already Gary already had the connection there. Oh, so know. it's kind of like a bridge on that. So we're 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 very content there. Awesome! It's definitely a good place to go. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Let's talk about the important things. Oh. Yeah. What's that? Booze and cats. Wow. <laughs> All right. <laughs> so, uh, yes and yes. There we go. <laughs> Done. Next. Um, yeah, yeah. There, 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 there will be bars. Uh, we will have some themed bars, including in the Hall of Shadows. We just announced that um, our friends at Drunken Devil, Matt Dorado and his crew, yeah. they are going to be hosting a uh, freaky tiki bar. In That's awesome. the Hall of Shadows. And they're going to have like real tiki drinks? That's gonna well, be we're awesome. hoping. And so so here's the deal. <laughs> Any food and beverage, we can plan and we can theme the area, but Long Beach Convention Center, it's up to their crew to man that yeah. oh, and gosh. to make those drinks. So we don't set the prices, as everybody groans. Yeah. We, don't, we don't set the prices of the drinks. We don't make the drinks. We do not determine the amount of bartenders. Oh. Mm, believe me, that's always on my yeah. radar, and that's... That is the way that it is. It has to be the um, way of the convention center. And it is all up to the convention center. Yes. Yes. So we are going to theme the area. Matt is going to have talent wandering and mingling with people okay. in the area because it wouldn't be a, an experience without actors, live actors, you know, interacting. And um, the convention center will hopefully be making some really cool drinks. For people that want Hopefully. to stop by the Freaky Tiki Bar. I hope that they would be self-aware enough to realize what a big deal this well, is they did, and for them to accommodate them. They did way. do some Midsummer Scream themed drinks last year, right? Yeah, we give them names. We can yeah. tell them like names of something. Like we at the party, we had like the Black Cat, I think. Right? Yeah. And they, they will make a drink to that. So I would assume that they are going to be making things like Mai Tais and, you know, that, you know, easy stuff like yeah. that to make. And so, yeah. So fingers crossed and... Uh, I think it's going to be great. I mean, we, we went and we got a bunch of tiki stuff at um, Oceanic Arts, which is an amazing warehouse here in Whittier, where they have like everything tiki you can imagine. Oh, so we like there. got a ton of stuff uh, to, to prop that out with. And so, no, it's, I think it's going to be a lot of fun. It, it's awesome. going to be right when you go into the Hall of Shadows uh, through the Cal Haunts um, exhibit, which is the Tiki Terror exhibit, uh, you will find there are tiki vendors and artisans. And then you will find the entrance to the, it's kind of, sort of hidden, Tiki Bar. It's got a kind of a small entrance, and then it opens up into a bigger space. So it's going to be kind of like the new area at Disneyland. It's going to be fun. Well, there you go. Yeah, nowhere to go. Yeah, so it's going to be great. That sounds awesome. Yeah, yeah, yeah. (laughs) And then, of course, throughout. I mean, throughout the the weekend, we'll have bars everywhere. I'm excited. There's so much Tiki stuff. That seems like yeah. kind of a big deal. Like well, I went to the thing. website to check it out, and the yeah. tiki stuff was pretty uh, featured. Yeah. Well, that was our thing. Usually, we have like one or two common thread themes, right? Yeah. And so I, I came to the team last year, and I said, "Look, I really want to do, I want to do a, 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 a tiki crossover." 
because there is a very definite crossover between horror and Halloween and tiki bands. They yeah. all like but that, that weird shit, tell, right? It's all weird mean, shit. Sure, well, of course, there's, that's a big part of the tiki culture. Mm -hmm. You know, we have a lot of theme park fans that come, and people have grown up with Tiki Room, and now yeah. there's Trader Sam's mm -hmm. and, and all that culture. And, and from Florida, you've got the, the Skipper Canteen and all the yeah. Adventureland stuff over there. So, sure, there are a lot of people that really love that crossover, and we've certainly got a lot of Haunted Mansion and, and theme park fans coming this year mm -hmm. to Midsummer as we always do. And so, um, yeah, I just thought that would be a really cool, really natural crossover this year. Mm -hmm. And uh, David was like, yeah, that's great. Let's see how we do. And people have reacted so strongly to it. Oh, truly. On the Decay Brigade alone, there's like three people who are obsessed with Tiki, and I'm like, really? Yeah. Not it's that a I don't like it, but I just, I didn't know it was such an impassioned thing. Yeah. yeah it is. <laughs> yeah, no, it, it, it's a thing. People are as passionate about Tiki as fans are passionate about the Haunted Mansion. Yeah. Or about Not Scary Farm. You know, it, it, it's a very very particular group of people that mm -hmm. know their stuff. They collect all these cups and stuff. And it's a lifestyle for them. You yeah. bet it is. Yeah. Yeah. It totally is. They, they may be spooky kids, but maybe they're spooky Polynesian-themed kids, you know? Oh, true. With, like a, with, a, a, with a tiki twist. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's really strange. Yeah. So, yeah. So, that that's great. And uh, so, yeah. There's there's lots of tiki stuff. That's so cool. And then there's the, the entrance to the Hall of Shadows, which is also along same along the lines yeah. of the tiki theme. Cal Haunts is doing the biggest display they've ever done. Um, I've been posting on my own Instagram account as well as, as Twitter and then the Midsummer accounts. Um, they're creating Tiki Terror, and it's basically, um, you know, the, the, the best way to, to, to explain it is it's kind of like the exterior queue of Indiana Jones. Ooh. Lots of foliage, a crumbling temple ruin. Um, these guys actually downloaded blueprints of a 1935 plane, and they've built a plane and so the plane has crashed, and people are going to walk in, and and one of the trails will take you under the wing of this crashed plane. Dude, That's it's so ridiculous. Awesome. It, it, it's like full size. Plane. It's like full size. Yeah, yeah. it's like cool. legit. And you're just like, what? They are really dedicated. Oh, uh, Cal Haunts, yeah. they're, they're amazing. I mean, all of our haunters, of course, are amazing. Cal Haunts, they're just so near and dear to my heart. Diane and Preston, and and the entire team there have just gone so far up and beyond. I mean. I don't want to give it all away, but we're going to, you know, be, be, if if there are places to look into the temple, make sure you look through the holes into the temple and, and you know, you wouldn't have a, a, a tropical tiki terror place without an erupting volcano. So look for that kind of thing. Yeah, and, but that's uh, the thing is yeah. they always have so much detail and so many hidden things. Like yeah. every time I would walk in the Hall of Shadows, even back to when they did just it was like a graveyard before the Frankenstein yeah. thing. Yeah, it was a Sleepy Hollow. The Sleepy Hollow. Yeah. yeah, there was always so many things that every time you walked through, you'd be like, oh, I didn't even notice that last time. Oh, yeah, there's something new and every time. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah, it's crazy. So the detail in this and just the manpower going into this is just, it's mind-blowing. I, I, I roll up on them to check on them like, you know, I try to like every couple weekends go and... It's just ridiculous the amount of work and the sheer amount of people working out in the heat and mm -hmm. and and just the stuff that they do and how fast they do it and it's unbelievable and the, yeah. the skill like it's not you know I know it's Cal Haunts and it's like you know the local home haunter kind of thing but the level of talent that goes into these things it's ridiculous it's yeah 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 incredible. yeah yep yeah so beyond that that's where you're going to find the Tiki Terror um, vendor area where we're going to have all sorts of like weird creepy Tiki. Themed merchandise. And so all our yes. are going to be. <laughs> and then uh, beyond that is the Drunken Devil Tiki, uh, Freaky Tiki Bar. And That's you're going to have more dark vendors in there? Or are you? We have a few this out? year. We have a few this year that, yeah. that make sense in there, like the Light Up Masks mm -hmm. is going to be in there. Um, Joey with Bog It Up, they're going to be oh, in there yeah. again. Yeah. yeah. And honest. so, but people that really make sense yeah. Yeah. in that area. But generally, the area uh, inside Hall of Shadows for vendors this year really are our, our, our tiki center awesome that's what yeah, we really fun. wanted to go yeah. to yeah <laughs> <That'd be laughs> <a lot of laughs> sitting there like idiots yeah yeah we do well actually that's a fun carryover type thing i wonder if we can do a layover uh uh what do they call it a uh an overlay yeah in the decayed brigade if we can do something now Maybe. kind of take that thing we'll see it'll be fun you got, I know four, the kids you got four weeks you got you got you got yeah. all the time in the world exactly oh, yeah. there you go four weeks <laughs> Because truly, we don't have anything else going on. Three so weeks by the time people hear this. So, <laughs> yeah. tick tock, no problem. No so, as far problem. as the Hall of Shadows go, yeah. hold on, time they, out. We're timing out. We talked about the booze. Yeah. What about the kitties? Oh, we didn't talk we about, didn't, about the kitties yet. I didn't hear about the kitties. Well, we got a yes. 
All right. <laughs> That's not good enough. I need more. <laughs> so what I am going to do, like I guess throughout the, the podcast here, is since we are so close to midsummer, I'm going to start dropping some like exclusive knowledge <laughs> with you guys. Awesome. And we're going to share some of these things with you to share um, as pictures when you post the, the podcast to share as, as exclusive photos, too. So um, as you know, the, the, the Black Cat Lounge is coming back, and it is one of the most popular aspects of Midsummer Screams. Yes. And that credit goes to Jackie Credderfield. You know, when I've told the story many times before, when we were coming up with Midsummer, we were spitballing ideas and just throwing everything at the wall and seeing what would stick, and she said, what about a cat rescue? <laughs> and we were like, uh, well, sure. <laughs> and people <laughs> lost their minds. Oh, yeah. Yeah. The line goes for days. Like people have never seen kittens. Like, it's it's amazing. It's like a freaking like alien zoo. That's why I right? use my get in early pass, dude. It is unbelievable. And, and before the doors open, I knock and I'm like, "Can I play with the kittens for 20 minutes before the doors open?" And they're like, "Sure, come right. on in." So, oh yeah, that's how yeah. the DB gets in there. Is we come in like with our makeup on and like nothing else, and we're yeah. like, "We just want to pet a cat for 10 minutes before we have to get in costume." <laughs> so, so, so what for those that don't know what this is that we're talking about? Um, we have the LA Kitten Rescue. They come in and they bring all these kitties that are in need of forever homes. And so throughout the weekend, we have, you know, thousands of people will pass through and see, like, it's herds of kitties just like free roaming <laughs> in this room that's it's decorated with toys awesome. and everything. And throughout the weekend, people adopt these cats. And so it's a win win for everybody. You get to see kittens because who doesn't love kittens? Mm -hmm. And then these little guys get their forever homes, which is the main goal. That is the uh, best part is they really do get adopted. Yeah. And they get socialized great. by all these different weird people. Yeah. That, it's awesome. that you know, some mm -hmm. of them have these costumes on. So, like, you're really getting them exposed to some weird stuff. And hopefully that isn't scarring them, but actually making them more social. Yeah. And then they find homes. Yeah. How many, do you know how many cats over the years? that you've been doing this have been adopted? You know, I don't because it happened. There's a lot of process that happens after midsummer. Yeah. Like you don't just say, okay, well, here's your cat, you know, and send yeah, me home. Yeah. Some walk out with the cats, but most of them, it's a whole process. They do the house check. They do yeah. all, you know, all that due diligence. Mm -hmm. So, um, no, I don't know. I know that it's a, a fair amount. Otherwise they wouldn't keep coming back, yeah. you know, to do business with us. Yeah. But, uh, no. And so we just, we, we want people to do that. And that said, it has kind of created a Frankenstein's monster in that <laughs> the line is so damn long that people that are really interested have a hard time getting in. Yeah. Because there's a million things going on, and suddenly you're like, well, the wait's like 45 minutes to see a kitty, and it's like, mm, you know. Well, you know what you could start doing? Virtual queue. Well, oh, God. So <laughs> what we are doing, and here's our first, here's our first exclusive I'm going to show you guys. So you, you guys can, like... You, the listeners can hear as I'm showing you these things here. I'm going to make sure that I have all of my correct information here. So what we're going to do is Jeff Granito, who is one of our uh, Tiki vendors, he's a renowned Tiki artist. He does stuff for the Tiki world, and also he does stuff for Disney, for different events and things like that. He has actually designed a special pin oh. this year, a Koizune mm -hmm. pin that guests are going to be able to buy for $15. And it's a really cool looking oh, pin. Oh my god! And it glows gosh. in the dark, which is oh really cool. Oh my gosh. And so not only do you get this cool pin, which we're going to give you this graphic to put on your on your social media. So um, you get the pin, uh, a good chunk of that $15 goes to the LA Kitten Rescue. Oh, that's so awesome. The kitties this year, not only are they going to like get a lot of cats adopted, they're also going to get a lot of money from people that are just wanting yeah. to buy the pin and all that. Um, this pin also gets people priority access. Oh, into, so, so it's your fast pass. That's your fast pass. pass. That's your fast Into pass, the guys. Black Cat Lounge. That's incredible. People who can't adopt a cat, but they want to help in some way. Yes. That's their way to do it. And that's it. Yeah. That is so So buy the great. pin. And you get so there you go. Case. That's our first. We got lots of really cool merchandise stuff we're going to talk about tonight. Oh and that gosh. is, so that's the, that's the first one that, the Jeff Bernito, the, the, the black cat. I love the oh, So that. awesome. That and it's the black, yeah, it's the and black. It's, it's yeah. your cat. It's, it's, it's the same. black cat. Yeah. It's the black cat that's on our site this year that's more, it's kind of a, kind of looks like a cross between ours and, a, and like a Siamese look. Yeah. yeah. And it's kind of got the whole tiki vibe going. Yeah. And so that's what the uh, the pin represents. I love it. Oh, it's so cute. So there you go. So <laughs> and the black we, we think, in the background. Yeah, we think that yeah. we've kind of 
uh, solve maybe the uh, logistics issues that that so the, the, the obviously cat not lounge everybody thing? can have priority access. So right. what's the is there a limited number of these pins? Wow, now you're into territory that I don't know. I would assume with anything like that, there is going to be a limited, yeah. just yeah. because cost and runtime and creating. Um, so we don't have like an unlimited supply of these. I'm sure that we will have a, a decent amount. So buy them the first day. As so as hell yeah, if you want to do that, maybe, <laughs> yeah, if you want to help the kitties out. Yeah. And you know what? Bottom line, if for some reason, you know, if we run out of the pins... Dude, I am sure that those people would be very happy for people to give them donations. I'm sure. Also, okay, so to the kitty. Of course. Of course. Yes. Yeah, so if you go to the table inside the room and say, "Hey, I'd like to give five bucks to the cats," of course they're going to take that, and good on you for doing that. Yeah. Because it does yeah. remain free, just like everything at Midsummer. It's it, it remains part of your your ticket yeah. price. Yeah. That's a wonderful way for people to contribute a little bit extra. Yeah. yeah that's awesome. Sweet. All right. All right. So, the kitties. You bet. <laughs> Back to the Hall of Shadows. Yeah. Okay. Um, so I did a quick kind of count. Okay. And as far as what's been announced, yes. I saw there was about 12 actual haunts. There's 12 or 13 haunts. And then there's a few displays. Yes. And then there's actually some entertainment in the area. Well, yeah, kind of. You guys. <laughs> like, are, you just, are you just trying to sneak <laughs> yeah, in yeah. as a caber gate yeah. or Well, <laughs> there's something else that I was really interested in, and I'm sure maybe you know more about it, maybe you don't. Okay. But Jack's Halloween Jamboree Interactive oh God, Scavenger yeah. Hunt. Yeah. What? So how yeah. is that going to work? And this is the same young man This that is Sam Kelman of OPT the, Hunt. Oh, amazing stuff. Okay, okay. I think he's all of, what, 16 now? Yeah. He's all grown up now. Now he's like 16, and he's created this high-tech haunt that people are going to start in the Hall of Shadows. They're going to be given keys, and they're going to take these keys all throughout the convention center show, uh, show floor to different... They're going to find clues to go to different places, and they're going to insert these keys and set off these interactive displays, and it tells a little story. That's it's not so super, cool. super involved, so it's not going to take you forever, and yeah. uh, it's not going to take you away from the show to do all yeah. this stuff. But it's going to get you to all points throughout so you can see all sorts of things on the show floor and in the Hall of Shadows. And there's this little show that's like the payoff for this. That's thing. so cool. And so that's Sam's, that is Sam's lead up to his show this year, which will be the, the, the Jamboree Part 2 or whatever it is yeah. you know, this year. Um, he's just a mad genius and we love him. He's mm-hmm. one of our favorite up and coming haunters. He's one of the young ones in the, in the Hall of Shadows, which I am... Very proud about, you know, fostering these young haunters in the Hall of Shadows and giving them a, a canvas to really show off their stuff. And they do very well. Um, and so that's what Sam's doing this year for us. That sounds that's so awesome. <laughs> the other cool one that I noticed was Monsters of Mayhem, which is a demo of a homemade dark ride. Dude, so this is crazy. That's so up your alley, Casey. Yes. Now, this, are you actually going to get a ride in? This is crazy. So I, I think it's going to be limited. Yeah. I don't think it's going to have, I, I don't think it's going to have, we still got to work this stuff out. Because, you know, we got time. Um, <laughs> the, the, the thing is, everyone's going to want to ride it. I yeah. don't think that everybody's going to get to ride it. Mm-hmm. It's not going to be like this huge, scary, dark ride thing. It's going to be pretty much like an oval track around some flats or whatever. Yeah. But this guy has made an honest to God like dark ride system and he's very open about showing everybody like how to do it and and like yes you can do it too you know as seen on TV. That's so he, cool. he and he has like this ridiculous like dispatch console that's like a Disney di- it like LED lights for the different zones where the cars are. It's just stupid. It's amazing. I, I lost my mind. We went and saw it. It's in the Inland Empire. We went and saw it um probably about two months ago David took me out there and I, and yeah. I just I lost my mind because originally David was going to have him on the show floor as just a demo, you know, type of thing. Yeah. Yeah. Because it really is, it's not really a, an attraction attraction. But I was like, oh no, this shit is so cool. It's got, <laughs> we got into like, we started rolling up sleeves. We're like, no, 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 <laughs> it's going to be in Hall of Shadows, man. And <laughs> That's so, mine. Yeah. And, 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 and it's just, it's phenomenal. It is just, it's ridiculous. Yeah. Well, the fact that he's like, here's how I did it. Here's how you can oh, do it. Oh, and he's too. very, and you know, because sometimes people are very, you know, no, this is mine. This is my proprietary yeah. stuff. And I get that. I totally get that. Yeah, it happens sometimes. Um, but no, he's just really just, uh, not, they're great. They're great people and they're just going to just do it up. And they've got a great sign that they're going to just come see it. 
maybe you can get a ride on it. Maybe if you ask him pretty, pretty please. <laughs> and it's, it's just so much fun. That's awesome. It's just stupid fun that is just, everybody is instantly like 12 again riding this thing. Oh, for sure. It's, it's like riding the, you know, the dark ride at the fair. Yeah. It's just so stupid and so clever and so cute. And it's just, it's That's really so tangible. It's, it's like, badass. You can have it's, your own dark ride well, in your home. It's great. And I would love, I really want to push them to like, like next year in Hall of Shadows, I want like this full on dark ride, you know, working. <laughs> the people that, it, it's that it's, it's so awesome. Indiana Jones. Let's it's do so it. good. It, it's it's really great. <laughs> it's it, I love it. You it's guys gotta awesome. come see it. It's gonna be so much fun. I love that it goes there. It just yeah. takes what already exists and just levels it up. It's just enough for us to go. What the hell? It yeah. is. It's ridiculous. I got video. I think on my phone. I'll show you later after we're done with this. I, I rode it and I was like giddy. I was giddy. I was like, <laughs> I was like this is the most amazing. It's like thing. Uh, when we went to Castle Park and we rode there mm-hmm. old school dark ride. And we were just having so much fun on that thing. Yeah, same oh, feeling, same thing. Yeah. It's legit. Yep, that's so cool. Um, and then there's a Scream Queens. Yeah. Huh. Yeah. Which sounds awesome. More IP stuff this year, yeah. right? So yeah. now I'm completely. I, I'm. I'm fully transparent. I, I'm completely. Not familiar with Screen Queens, so I, I get. I guess I think I get what the concept is. That was a TV show, right? Uh-huh, yeah. yeah. And uh, they're going to come in, and it's kind of based on that. And um, yeah, so we're we're totally like last year we had our first IPs, right? We had the Donnie yeah. Darko, and right. we had Trick or Treat mm-hmm. in the Hall of Shadows. And so they're they're coming, and we embrace that, and we just make sure that we say that it's a fan experience, our right. fan tribute, or right. whatever to it. Because we don't want to cross wires with the studios and all this stuff, right. and um, no, yeah, that's going to be another really interesting yeah. experience. Can it's I it's a, I, I I yes, it's a walkthrough, and it's not just like a display, mm. but it's not like full on haunt yeah. type of thing. It's kind of like somewhere in the middle, but it's going to be a lot of fun. They came to the us. And, oh yeah, yeah. They, well, they came to us and they were very enthusiastic, and they've been they've been great the whole build process. And, yeah, it's going to be fun. That's an interesting perspective, having something that's more IP versus stuff that's homegrown and yeah. original stuff like everything else is. Yeah. It's, and I don't think it'll ever happen, but there's kind of that fear like it's going to turn into a big billboard. But I know yeah, that no. you wouldn't let that happen. Yeah, no, yeah. And, and I think just by default, because I mean, you're seeing like a, a lot of younger haunters kind of gravitate towards what's happening in themed entertainment these days. And this, this day and age... IPs rule the roost. I mean, yeah. it's all the heavy lifting's done. Yeah, yeah. If you walk into Hall of Shadows and you see, you know, Joe Blow's Scary House versus, you know, Scream Queens, you like go, oh, I know what Scream Queens is, like right off the bat. So the heavy yeah. lifting is already done yeah. for them. So I, I think that as, as more of these haunts come online and new haunters come on the scene, they will gravitate towards what's going on in themed entertainment today. So we are going to see a mix in these things at, at Midsummer going forward. It's kind of a sign of the times also because in, in current cinema you see a lot of remakes and reboots and things like that yeah. where it's going to bleed into other avenues of entertainment as well. Yeah. Like case in point with the haunted industry. Yeah, yeah totally. Makes sense. Yep. What else you got? What do I got? I have a million <laughs> questions that may or may not be entertaining for our audience. So, I don't know. Well, um, let's address your notes. What do you got? Um, let's see. What else we got? Uh, I'm doing pretty got? good. I, I haven't come to one where I'm like, I don't know. But, <laughs> but I'm sure we'll get there. Know. I'm sure yeah. we'll get there. Let's see, what can I dump you with? Oh, boy. God, now um, I opened my mouth. This <laughs> uh, well, we got panels. So we got our usual Six Flags, Knots, Universal, Queen Mary. Uh, we got the 50 years of Disneyland's Haunted Mansion. We do, and that's going to be a great one. Yeah. Awesome. Um, yeah. And then we got... I got let, me, let me talk real quick about okay. that. <laughs> because I am in love with... I hate you, Doug Barnes, but I am so happy that he's doing it. Really, I hate you. Um, but no... That panel is going to be the must-see. I mean, if you're a Haunted Mansion fan, that is going to be the one. Mm-hmm. We've got um, Don Hahn is going to be on it. Don Hahn was the producer of the Haunted Mansion movie. Mm-hmm. and But he was also, like, the, the producer of, of like, like, Beauty and the Beast and, like, a, like, Disney animated classics back in the day that, like, really brought Disney back from the brink. Mm-hmm. And so Don Hahn is a, is a big deal in the Disney community and the nicest guy in the world. And so we've got Tony Baxter, which is the fan favorite. Everybody yep. knows Tony Baxter, Imagineering legend. I'll admit um, to that. He yeah. was a kid. He was a kid when the Haunted Mansion opened. And uh, he remembers seeing the, the original Hatbox ghost yeah. uh, in the mansion before it was taken out. Yeah. And so Tony's going to come to speak on behalf of the second generation of Imagineers that kind of like followed in the footsteps of, of the original Wed guys 
that created the mansion. Mm -hmm. And so Tony will be able to speak to what the mansion means um, to him as a fan as growing up as well as uh, as an industry standard, yes. really across the board, mm -hmm. which I think is very important because Haunted Mansion still today, 50 years later, remains like the watermark yeah. uh, of attractions. They just don't make them like that anymore. Has that been, I mean, is this something that they'll discuss as to, like, why, like, actually... I would love to hear them discuss why. that. I yeah. mean, hell, I'm going to try to be there as long as I can before <laughs> that, because it's going to be a yeah. great panel. Um, so we have uh, Tony, we have we have Bob Gurr, of course, Bob yeah. Gurr. Now, so Bob didn't work... So the funny thing with Bob is people don't realize the Haunted Mansion, the Doom Buggies, were created actually first for Adventure Through Inner yes. Space. Oh, yeah. So right. Bob created the Omnimover Omni system uh, for Inner Space, mm -hmm. and then it was monkeyed with a little bit, and I'm sure if you can go into detail about how it was maybe altered a little bit to better serve, like, the Haunted Mansion. Sure. So Bob can talk about, you know, well, we painted them black instead yeah. of dark blue, you know, whatever. <laughs> but Bob's always <laughs> great for a party, and he's always great to tell stories. And he was there. He was there for this. Mm. And so we're going to have him on the panel doing that as well because we love our Bob Gurr. And um, then we also have... So when I was with Don Hahn, uh, I was sitting with him talking about Midsummer and about the panel and all that. And we got into the whole discussion about what a bummer it was that in creating this amazing 50th anniversary panel presentation, really, like, most of the big players from the Haunted Mansion aren't with us anymore. Right. You mm -hmm. know? 50 years later. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, and a lot of these guys were, you know, not necessarily young, young guys when they were designing the Haunted Mansion. Yeah. So some of them are long gone. Yeah. And so um, I just was talking to Don about kind of the, the challenges of creating a really cool panel about it, but with second-hand information and, yeah. and folks. And he said, well, have you ever heard of a woman named Tanya Norris? And I said, no. And I said, who is this Tanya Norris? He goes, neither had I until I bumped into her at an event and was introduced to her a couple of weeks ago. So Tanya Norris was hired by WED when there were 29 employees to come in and basically be the interior designer of New Orleans Square when that was wow. under development. No big deal. Right? <laughs> so... She came in, she worked on all things New Orleans Square, from the one-of-a-kind antique store to her last deal with the with New Orleans Square was being the interior designer of the Haunted Mansion. Um, she was she became very close with the Disney families, Walt and Roy. She's got amazing pictures of, of her with the families. We're gonna show a picture of her with, with Walt getting onto oh, his personal plane. That's awesome. And she would fly across the country with him to go get antiques and look at things and she has amazing stories that are going to make your head melt, but what's going to make fans wet their collective pants all at the same time <laughs> is Tanya was the one who came up with the wallpaper. Jesus oh. Christ. <laughs> right? That's awesome. That's where everybody's head just goes oh, like, never mind God. that she was a, a, an amazing, strong female that created, you know, did say. the interior <laughs> design for, for, but you say the wallpaper and everybody goes, ah! And then, you know, it's on everybody's like, phone, everyone it's on the computer. Their socks, like, I their, have those socks. Yes, it, everything. <laughs> so, and, and the great thing about Tanya is she's so unassuming and she's so well spoken and so um, absolutely spry and with it, remembers everything vividly. She is not as plugged in as Bob Gurr is to like social media and all that. Oh, sure. She had no idea until very recently that this was even a thing. Wow. The Haunted Mansion stuff. The fans, the wallpaper. She had no idea. She created an industry. She had, well, she had, she had no idea. Wow. And so she is just tickled that all these decades, literally all these decades later, this is suddenly a thing. That yeah. is so pure. And That's so, so I think she'll be so I am surprised. So, that's actually been my favorite part over the entire spectrum of Midsummer 19. That's been my favorite part was finding Tanya, being introduced to Tanya by yeah. Don Han. And meeting with her and sitting with her and hearing these stories and bringing her into this panel, that's been hands down my favorite aspect of this entire process this time. I cannot wait to see how And I cannot wait for her to come on stage. And see how many people And all are the there. fans give her so yeah. much love. Get a standing ovation. It's going to be great. It's going yeah. to be phenomenal. It's going to be great. So, oh my gosh. yeah, it, Tanya on stage is going to be amazing. She's going to be great. It's going to be wonderful to be a part of that. And to see, I mean, that's history. Mm -hmm. You're yeah. witnessing history there. Mm -hmm. I mean, the 50th anniversary alone is something where, you know, it's this all-encompassing thing and it's beautiful. But yeah. to see some, some you know, corner of it that is so monumental and so memorable. Yeah. And like that, when you think Haunted Mansion, you think like the, the posters 
the four posters that are inside the elevator, yep. and even the wallpaper. Yep. Yeah. It's a tangible, it's a connection that people of all ages suddenly have to this designer who just sketched out a design and didn't even realize like, it became a thing. Like, this is spooky and cute. Yeah. Work. Yeah. So, that's wow. going to be really very exciting, I think. That's cool. Oh, my gosh. Yeah. Cool. And then we have another anniversary podcast, the uh, oh. 30 Years of Tales from the Crypt. Yeah, so this is something that David Markland pulled together. Um, David Markland knew some folks, and uh, we have a Tales from the Crypt reunion Which is awesome. uh, presentation. So, like, the voice actor? Yes. Yes, because oh. Kassir's going to be there. Yeah, and, oh. and, and people are, like, really, really excited about it. Oh, this is a big deal. So it is a big deal. Yeah. So, now, again, like, I'm very transparent about everything, was not... Ever really my thing. I was not a Tales from the Crypt wow. fan. I was just, I just, I don't know what I was doing, but I was. It, it was might just, be, it might be an age thing because maybe. when I first started watching Tales from the Crypt, I was very impressionable, and I was yeah. about seven. Okay, and yeah. it was the most terrifying thing I'd ever seen in my life, but it made an impression. Yeah, and it's mm-hmm. something that's like it's just very special to me. I think I was like older at that point, and it was just, it just was not my jam. It was just yeah. not my thing. And uh, but the minute David said, "Hey, what do you think about this?" I said. Yes, 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 because people I know love Tales from the Crypt. Do we oh, yeah. know if, if the voice act, the original voice actor did the voice for when the tale, uh, the Crypt Keeper was at Knott's? I don't or know. Did they do but a that sound would, alike? That's a great Yeah, that's a great trivia. question. Yeah. Yeah, I don't know. We'll have, hmm. to, we'll have to pass that on. Cause that's, a, that is a, a, that's a great Yeah, because they used a him. Great question. He had his own show, and he was also in the Inquisition. I know that John, oh, yeah. I, I know that he's local, so yeah. I mean... Wow, that would be really interesting to find out. I don't know. That's a fantastic question. That's a great question, Casey. <laughs> well, I'll ask it at the panel if there it is. There you go. <laughs> just stand up and just interrupt everybody. And yeah. Just stand hey, up. Man. Just, just walk right up I'm to the front. I'm just going to run in between yeah, just run other things. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but uh, no, that's a great question. And I don't know the answer to that. We'll have to find out. Yeah. 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 Uh, God, I'm trying to think. I haven't stumped you yet. But like the puppeteers and the like, what, what, who, what aspect of the production are going to be at the reunion? See, there I am, kind of stumped. Okay, uh, there, we go. there you go. Well, we, we could look online. I'm sure it listed online. But I mean, uh, it's it's legit. It, it's from the production team to all the way to John Kassir. Like writers, directors. Yeah, okay. yeah, yeah. It's going to be all the folks that created the show. That's usually who we go for. When was we there anything this. like that before that came around? I mean, there was Alf that had like the puppet. Like the puppeteering, as far as like television goes, but I don't remember mm. a lot of puppeteering. And then the, that weird dinosaurs thing with the talking baby dinosaur. Yeah. But like, as far as scary stuff, I don't remember something prolific like that where the the main character was a puppet. Yeah, I don't think so. I think that's yeah. pretty. Uh, that's pretty much that, its own standalone deal. Yeah, because that, did that come before like Chucky and and all that kind of stuff? I oh Chucky might have been right around the same yeah. time, right? Yeah. The same era. I guess I should be asking. In all the practical that. stuff. Yeah, and all the practical stuff that, you know, sounds about mm-hmm. right. I'm just so memorable. So deeply stamped in my mind. People are excited. Memorable. That's going to be a really popular presentation. Mm-hmm. Yes, it's going to be really great. Yeah. Is that going to be on stage one or two? Boy, now you're rolling out this. I, I, <laughs> I, 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 you know, I, so here's the thing. And here, here's, here's my padding. Here's my padding. We are not 100% locked yet oh, on, on where go. things are. Super so we, things are still vacillating. Mm. So we could say, you know what, we need to have that on stage one. we we got to make time for that. We think, I mean, we scrambled last year with BuzzFeed. Yeah. You know, yeah. We had them on stage two, and when it was very apparent that that was a misstep on our part, oh, yeah, we scrambled and, and very, I think very nicely adapted and moved everybody mm-hmm. you know pretty well to the main stage and mm-hmm. and the BuzzFeed guys were great and they stayed afterwards to meet every single you know fan and and uh they're going to be back again this year yeah, I saw on that. stage 1 All right. and uh yeah so there is some given place that we are still juggling we still are juggling some some time slots and where we're going to like place things. Yeah. How do you decide? Yeah. Like, if it's a big name, how do you decide if it's going to go on stage one or stage two? It's two? a gut. It's a gut thing, and also it comes down to once we have locked everything and there's physically no other room, yeah. and we're like, well, but we really have to have this. We will tell the studio or or group or whoever it happens to be, the only spot we have left is on stage two, and so that's where we're going to have to put you guys. Yeah. It's not like, again, it's not like it's a bad thing to be on stage too. It's yeah. an 800 seat, you know, room. It's a, it's a big stage. Yeah. Um, and not all presentations will fill that. You know, I, my bar thing is going to be in there. There's no way that there's going to be 800 people in there to see the bar thing. Mm-hmm. So I, I totally get that. 
Now, I would love to have 800 people in there, but I just don't, I just don't think that is the case. Yeah. But for, for larger things like a Tales from the Crypt, you know, that kind of thing, yeah, we will get a lot of people. Definitely. And so, so yeah, but we are, we're, we're vacillating still on, on, before we set lock everything. Certain things are, like the mansion panel, that's yeah. locked, you know, that type of thing. Mm-hmm. BuzzFeed is locked. Um, but, uh, no, there, there's still, there's still some playroom. We, we, we allow ourselves right up until like the last two weeks and then we just lock everything down. Cool. Yeah. At some point you just have to do the cutoff and just start plugging yeah. things in. Yep. Yeah. Sweet. So I don't know, have you guys announced this yet? Cause we can cut it out if you did. <laughs> I haven't. Um, but there is another kind of panel room where you're going to do podcasting. So it's the podcast stage. Yeah. And we're really excited about this. Because we have a lot of podcasts like you guys that every year report about Midsummer Scream and we talk about it. Mm-hmm. Um, but I, 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 you know, we were we're talking and, and God, it's one of those things where I don't know whether it was David's idea, my idea, or we both agreed on it, or somebody, somebody at some point said we should have a podcast room type of thing. Mm-hmm. And so it's grown. So the podcast stage is going to be full all weekend of your favorite podcasts, including Tales from the Fog. Yay. And uh, you're going to have, it's a, it's kind of like a living room setup where you're going to have a couch and chairs and microphones, and you're just going to chill and just like have a, a living room discussion with people. That's a good idea. Yeah, it's in front setting. of a live audience, awesome. and people can come and go as they, they please. Hopefully they will stay for the duration for most of these. That'd be nice. And, <laughs> um, yeah, and then you'll be able to really sit then as your own podcasts after Midsummer Screen. That is such a great idea. I feel like that's Fun. something that, like a um, a Comic Con or something like that, would have that avenue where you can come in because there are so many people who report on all of this content yeah. and you have all these different perspectives. But like, why not actually collect that in a place that's going to be somewhat sound treated yeah. and like designated for you to do that? Because you know that with all the media things, people are walking around trying to record interviews on the show floor. Yep. I mean, it's just a horrible mess trying to work out that sound. But this is a nice opportunity for pods. I mean, like us, like we're not a huge pod, but we have the opportunity to see some really, you know, cool things and be exposed to a lot of people and get like an up close and personal view on the convention as it's happening. Yeah. I think it's yeah. a really great opportunity. I think it's gonna be a lot of fun. And there's already like like podcasts that are just now hearing about it are like, ooh, ooh, I wanna do it. And it's like, <laughs> yeah. well we're 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 booked up, so wow. again, so we're we're, we're, we're looking at 2020 now as to like who we're going to wow. have and what we're going to do for that. That's so cool. But yeah, so and, and it's great. I mean, we've done it in the past, but not to this, not to this scale where it's its own dedicated space. But like Jeff Tucker has done his 91 Reasons, you yeah, know? yeah. Um, and Doug Barnes, every time he hosts something, that becomes a, a season pass podcast. Mm-hmm. But we really wanted to open it up and really give it to. Other podcasters like Theme Park Duo yeah, is nice. going to interview Jeff Sheffelbein of the Sinister Point. Awesome. And he's going to talk about his entire haunt history and what he's doing now with the Sinister Bar. And That's so, a good story. Yeah, <laughs> so they're going to get that and, and you're going to have like like Parks and Cons. They will they will talk to uh, John Cook and Ted Doherty. Oh hell yeah. About like productions and all nice. the stuff that they're up to. So and then you guys are going to get the Cal Haunts team. Shut up, really? Yes. <gasps> You're going to get the Cal Haunts team. It's going to be called So You Want to Be a Haunter. And less structured, maybe, interview-wise than the other ones, you guys are going to have, like, seven or eight members, prominent members of Cal Haunts um, up on the stage, and we are going to ask the audience that that are there that hopefully are, like, wannabe haunters and that kind of thing that yeah. have questions, how do I do this? And there will be somebody... You know, in a perfect world, there's going to be somebody on the panel there with you guys that says, "Oh, I specialized in, in I specialize in digital projection." Mm-hmm. You know, this oh, is how yeah. you do it, and and so it's going to be a like a live hour long Q and A and discussion with the Cal Haunts people oh, and the gosh, audience about good. how you become a haunter. That's this awesome. is per- this dude again, right up your alley, Casey. <laughs> <laughs> this is made for you. Yeah. So it's going to be a lot of fun. That was genuine news. I don't know if it was news to you, but that was genuine news to me. And I am so goddamn excited. Yeah, that's really going to be fun. <laughs> that's going to be great. I love those folks. And we yeah. know a couple of them. So, I mean, there might be a chance that there's someone on there that we actually have done work with before. Maybe, so yeah. It'd be nice. What kind of questions do you got? All of mine is like boring ass technical <laughs> stuff that no one cares. <laughs> All right. Well, then we could talk about uh, entertainment. So we talked about Zombie Joe's. Yes. Um, but there's actually a few more companies doing some stuff. We, we do. Uh, Fallen Saints. 
force of nature, yeah. They're yeah. bringing fallen saints back to us, and that's yeah. their family-friendly show that they do. It's Sebastian and his team, mm-hmm. and we love those guys. They've been with us, and they do it every year with us now, and uh, they're going to have a special presentation. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I was going to ask if they write okay. something specific for this event. Yeah, yeah. It's always done for midsummer, and uh, it usually leads into what they're going to do in the fall. Yeah. Nice. And it's a great bridge for them, yeah. Uh, and then we got the horror fashion show back. Mm-hmm. That's cool. That's always fun. Yeah, crowd pleaser. And then one that I haven't heard of before, Dr. Zombie's Ghost Show of Terror. Yeah, so we love old-fashioned ghost shows, right? Yeah. Spook shows where you turn out the light, and there's black light stuff, and funky-ass you know, ghosts and stuff flying around. So David Markland found somebody that does this, and so we're bringing that, that to Midsummer so Screen, an cool. old-fashioned spook show. Sounds so, awesome. There's definitely a vibe, like a, a vintage antique vibe going on. We love on. it. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. That's what our whole branding is 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 based on. And yeah. so it's gonna be it's gonna be fun stuff, yeah. Now, there's one thing that I was looking for and okay. I didn't find it. Okay. So I don't know. Uh oh, now we're on the spot. I don't know Here if it comes. It brass been tax time. Announced or if you guys are moving away from it, but okay. I couldn't find any classes listed. So the classes are, as we speak, being finalized before we take it live. Mm. We have we have a lot of classes actually this year. Yeah, you have yeah. a lot of rooms to fill. We do. We <laughs> have we have two classrooms this year that are just like nonstop each day, wow. all day long. And so I know that we are prepping that still. Um, we are just basically scrambling to get you know the the definitions of what these classes are. Again, these are all free of charge. They come with your admission. Nice. You know, we don't upcharge these these classes that are in our breakout rooms. Mm-hmm. Um, we do have some on the show floor that are make and take. Yeah, that you pay, you pay for the you know you pay for the uh, like the materials and that type so of thing. Like the lanterns and the tea yeah, stones. but but the breakout rooms where we yeah. have like the seminars and that kind of thing. Yeah. those are all included in your ticket price. Yeah, so we have um, you know big favorite last year we had um, Matt Maldonado and Cassie Lopez they they did the the theme park how to get into the themed entertainment yes. oh, whatever yeah. so yeah. they're coming back and their presentation is again it's called from screen parks to theme parks nice. and it's basically oh. talking to fans about how to break into the business and get your dream job working in themed entertainment they are just fresh out of they just finished up installing Batu so they were on the Ooh, Star Wars nice. install team at Disneyland that's and no so, joke. Yeah, so they can they and their handiwork is seen all over Batu, and I'm sure they'll talk as much as they can about that. And then they're hopefully going to be able to talk about what they are moving on to next. And uh, they're just I love them so much. They're good friends, and they are just like couples goals for everybody. And they're <laughs> yeah. just like they're like the dream team, and they're they're just so, so cool. So they're going to be back talking about everything. Um, Bruce Stanton, who does Reign of Terror, he's going to be talking about, you know, he's going to do, uh, you know, Terror 101, talking about haunt stuff. Nice. Uh, we've got somebody that's coming in talking about, you know, the safety of, of running a haunt and how to look out for accidents and things like that. Um, God, we've got everything we've got. I think somebody's coming in talking about, oh, I don't want to, I don't want to get into areas that I don't know for <laughs> sure about. But, um, I mean, just, we, we have all sorts of, of, of classes going on this year. Um, Dan Biernowski, who is like the sound guy for Not Scary Farm and for like the Johnny Plague production, you know, John's, John, he does all the audio. He's going to do a class on the importance of audio. Shut and, the and, front and, door. Yeah, it's, it's going to be really great. I might miss a show. because so There you go. For that. Yeah. So, yeah, we've actually got a lot more classes this year than we did last year. Last year we were challenged because we didn't have a lot of rooms. Yeah. So we sacrificed some of the education last year. Yeah. But people really love that, and certainly that's a demographic that we need to, you know, meet with our show. And so we have worked very hard to bring some really cool classes nice. to Midsummer this year, and we think that we've delivered. And you're about to find those. So they are going to be going live very soon. That's we got incredible. Scott Swenson. Scott Swenson's coming oh, yeah. from Florida, awesome. and he's going to talk about his career and how to do podcasting and journalism. And he's going to read pro- poetry from he has books that he's done. Oh, yeah. So it's kind of a, a, a mosh pit of, of of Scott Swenson goodness. He's going to cool. be doing stuff, and yeah, it's really uh, really exciting this year. The education. He's the uh, Vault of Souls guy. He did. Right? Yes. Yes. Yeah, he did that for a couple of years, and I'm yeah. sure he'll talk about that. Yeah, so we've been, cool, huh? we've been prepping all these things to share with you guys. But yes, education is coming back in a big way. You really do have something for everybody. You've got yeah. something from just like the casual fan to the obsessed fan to the actual creator to the, the inspiring, you know, haunted yeah. creator. I mean, 
everybody. Yeah. Yeah. I, it's really, we, we really feel this year that we've hit, we've hit all marks. Yeah. This is like truly, I think, has officially become the Comic-Con of Han. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. I would have called it that last year, but yeah, definitely. Yeah. Now that it's got its own dedicated space and there's no other, other yeah. shows going on, yeah. it's like 100% this is. You know, this is like the haunt Comic Con. Yeah, we're very proud and we're very excited, and uh, it's it, it's it's daunting, but in a good way. You yeah. know, um, and like I said, we're already uh, got sites kind of focused. On, we're like a chame- chameleon, right? You have like one eye on this year, <laughs> and the other eye is like all cockeyed looking at twenty twenty. You mm-hmm. know, so we've got we've we've already got all that stuff going already. So. But that's what makes it great. You, yeah. you give that much attention for that long, you're going to find all those things that maybe you would have missed if you only had a couple of months to work on this thing. Sure. Well, and there are things now that we just realize, oh, God, we really want to do that. But it's like, no, it's 2020. Yeah. So we're already yeah. like working on panel ideas and things for, for 2020. So That is kind of yeah. I, like uh, comforting that you have a place to put those ideas. Oh, like yeah. They're not gone forever into yeah. the wind. Like you get to, they have a home. They're just not this year. They're going to be next year. Yeah. Sometimes they take years and years and years to come to fruition. Yeah. Just for whatever reason, somebody's schedule or a yeah. company not being sure or a studio not being ready or, you know, oh, sure. whatever. It all goes into the production. Mm-hmm. And so, you know, there are ups and downs and there are setbacks and there are unexpected surprises and we just kind of roll with it and, that's how we end up with our, our programming, which is crazy. You put a lot of faith into the work that you've put in, and rightfully so, because it pays off for you. Well, again, we you know, there's no magic sauce. There's no, we, we just, we, we create the show that we want to go to as fans. Yeah. We, that, that's, that's it. There's yeah. no, people say, how do you do it? Well, we just, well, we, we obviously, we have the know-how of how to put together a large-scale show, sure. and we have a support team you know, all the way to our white bats that that really are the, the life force behind Midsummer. Mm-hmm. But we just sit around a table for 18 months and we say, well, that would be really cool, you know, and we just create the show that we want to go to. Sure. It's a good way to do it. Yeah. That's basically how we build our shows. We go, you know, it'll be dumb. And then you try <laughs> something, you're like, oh, my God, that's amazing. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and it <Yeah>. stays. <laughs> that's got to be how so many crazy, you know, things get built at is just outside of the comfort zone. Yeah. I mean, inviting 30,000 people yeah. to come to your backyard barbecue yeah. is a big deal. You yeah. know, and it started out as a, you know, you know what would be cool? Mm-hmm. <laughs> you know, we got to do. Well, that's the thing, like, with the Decay Brigade, we always, like, we always try to push what we've been doing. And mm-hmm. so far we've done pretty good, but, you know, eventually I think we'll probably miss the mark. We'll see what happens. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, but we're but, the scale that we operate at is nowhere near the scale of something like Midsummer. You know, like just so many moving parts, so many yeah. ideas, so many brains involved and decisions to be made, and there's just it, it boggles my mind thinking about how this thing happens. And yeah. I can't, I, I like a tiny little sliver, a one hundredth of this pie, and I would be overwhelmed beyond beyond all sanity. It's just beautiful to watch it come together. It, it it's it's one of those things where we do have, and I've already had one or two like anxiety dreams. Mm-hmm. Sure. You know, where it's like it's the show starting and like none of your shit's done, and like you wake up in a puddle of sweat. Oh yeah. yeah. Um. Yeah. So I've I've had one or two of those already in the past couple months. Um. So it does get there, but we are we're confident. We're confident, but not cocky in that we we know that we are going to deliver the biggest show we've ever done, Mm -hmm. and we're going to deliver it well because we have an amazing team, Mm -hmm. and uh, we just, uh, we never rest on our laurels. We're always, uh, even during the show, we're like, oh, we could have done that better. We got to do that better next year, and, Mm -hmm. uh, you know, we but we go into it very confident. So it's not like we wake up in the morning biting nails. Uh, We just... Do wake up though with butterflies. If you don't wake up with butterflies, not just on show day, but like now, four weeks out, yeah. if you're not waking up every morning with butterflies, um, you're not pushing hard enough. You're not doing something right. I agree, one hundred percent. Yeah, yeah. I mean, like, like the, one of the craziest things I ever read was Bono said that no matter how big of the performance, before you two goes on stage. He is always like sick to his stomach, like ready to throw up before he goes on stage. And I'm thinking, dude, you could go on stage in front of a billion people and sing the alphabet and people would lose their freaking minds. And yet he says that he gets sick to his stomach with nerves Mm -hmm. before every performance. He's like the biggest rock star on the planet. Because he cares that much. Yeah. Yeah. So it's just, so if you as a creator 
um, aren't having, you know, ninja butterflies when you wake up, you're, mm-hmm. you're not, you're not doing it right. Yeah. In my opinion. Is there ever a time when you don't know what to do? Yeah. And you know what? It's great to have, you know, three other people at the table that I can bounce it and say, I don't know. What do you think? Yeah. That's and, a great and, thing. and we are we're at the point where we are like a family, sometimes dysfunctional, sometimes very close knit. <laughs> but at the end of the day, we're family now. We've done this long enough yeah. that you know I can throw out an idea, and David can look at me and say that's the worst thing I've ever heard in my in my life. Or, but side with love, or, 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 or David will say something, and I'm like, Ugh, no, yeah. it's so <laughs> dumb. What are you thinking over there? Um, you know, but. There are times, yeah, where you're like, well, dude, I don't know. What do you guys think? And that's why you have, you know, three other people to say, well, I think this or this or this. And yeah. I don't think that we've ever, we, we've never hit a stalemate on something where we're like, I don't know. Wow. We, we always kind of hit a resolve. And sometimes, yeah. sometimes it hits, sometimes it misses. We've had our ups and downs with things that work and didn't exactly work the way we thought they would. And they're all learning experiences, and we just use it to make a better show for the community next year. But we, uh, no, we just never, no, like, like, like failure is not an option, and, and saying, oh, I don't know, that to me, that's failure. Yeah. yeah so we just bounce it off of each other until we don't have uh, the, the, the question mark. That was a good answer. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, so as we're winding this down, um, do you have anything else you want to give so the fans? We can share. We're going to share stuff. <gasps> so yeah. okay. So there, there. We, we we're going kind of big on different merchandise options this year. Now God knows with 350 vendors, the last thing anybody wants to hear is there's going to be more exclusive midsummer merch. Oh no, that's what everybody wants. So, but that's what we do. We wants. have some really really cool stuff. Uh, coming online, and I'm going to uh, we'll share some pictures with you to share with fans. But we can also say that um, let's see. So I'm going to show you a picture because I don't have I, I don't have it uh, uh, with me. But so mommy masks from Ohio, uh, they do vacuum form masks. Yeah, and they David David Markland created a, a relationship with them. And so we actually have, um, in fact, David just posted tonight on our Instagram a video of we received, we received a, a couple hundred of these vacuum form black cat masks. Oh, guys. That <laughs> are going to be the, the convention show specials. And uh, so that is one of the things that we can tell you for sure that is going to be in our, um, in our in our repertoire this year of, of merchandise, I give it thirty seven minutes before they're sold out. Dude, it's yeah. going to go pretty fast. So sure they're they're, they're, they're pretty VIP cool. Mm-hmm. Um, let's see, I'm trying to 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 find a picture of it to show you guys real quick. I don't want any dead air here on this uh, on so, the podcast for you guys. While you're finding that, yeah. I will admit that I found it on Instagram and I let out the biggest squeak. David posted, so I was on my way down here to do the podcast with mm-hmm. you guys from LA, and David said, "Hey." I want to post this. What do you guys think? And I was like, I can't see what it is because I'm driving. Yeah. What is it? So I called him. I said, well, what is it? And he said, it's just a quick little video that I will have no explanation of what these masks are. And um, I said, sure. And so he went ahead and, and, and did it. You it know? was adorable because it had that this cool overlay where it looked like a like an old VHS. Recording. Oh, that's the one. Okay. Yeah. yeah. In the car, okay. I was like, oh, my God. And yeah. then and it, it pans up and it's hard kind of to see what is written on the boxes. But then it gets a little bit clearer, and you're like, oh, wait, what? And then you see it, and it's like, oh, my God, they're so cute. Yeah, so that's that's what the boxes are. <laughs> so the boxes have the cat. They've got the plastic so window, like cute. the old school, that's you know, costume. That's going to be a collector's item. And right they are. They're big. Oh, they're they're, sure. they're fairly big. Yeah. They're like this big. Mm-hmm. And, uh, you're going to see them. They're, yeah, they're, they're, they're phenomenal. There's... And there's a there's a picture of, of David wearing his. No, you can see, it's right? so cool. They're bigger than I thought. So they, they are. They're yeah. big. They're going to be currency. They're big. Yeah. They're like they're like they're like records. They're like twelve inch. You know, they're they're big. Yeah. They're, they're big. Those masks. ears are just the cutest. So yeah. So there's that. And so um. <laughs> so my thing is, you can't have a tiki tiki terror uh, theme without tiki mugs, right? Yes. Amen. So we have had. 500 challenge accepted of these oh, mugs made. Oh my God. And so what you're hearing Veronica having a breakdown over is we have the Midsummer Scream 
cat, and it's been made into a three-dimensional, um, it looks like a vintage Halloween uh, de- uh, Halloween uh, decoration. It was, the overlay was sculpted by Tom Thordarson, who is a huge tiki mug designer yeah. and, and artist, and uh, so he's done that. The back of it says Midsummer Screen 2019 on it. Oh my the god. The bottom of it is, uh, so Monk Tiki is doing this, and Thor's uh, signature oh, is on the bottom god. of these. And so we have 500 of these things. Oh, oh so that was not enough. <laughs> they're going to go so fast. I know. They're, they're going to go really fast. Um, but they are going to be for sale. And, uh, you know, you, you, you find some mugs are, like, heinously expensive. Yeah. Right? There are some tiki mugs that are, like, you know, limited edition, starting at 200 you know, dollars. Mm-hmm. These are not those. These we want, everybody that wants one is going to be able to very economically get one of these. At least the first 500 That's right. And, uh, yeah. <laughs> Again, then see these eBay. Are <laughs> but, uh, yeah. But you can tell that they're heavy. Yeah, they're, yeah, they're hefty. Oh, nice. Oh, my God. <laughs> Yeah, and so I'm really oh, excited about nice. that. Oh my gosh, this is amazing! I love, I love the detail and the texture of it. That's so clever. So that's one of the things that very early on I was like, "Well, we got to have a tiki mug," and I really want Tom to do this for us. I love and this. This um, is so yeah, he did it, and then the good folks at Monk Tiki they uh, they, they it. did it for yes. us, and uh, so yeah, I, we're we're very excited and very happy with the way that this came out. Those ears so are it's just amazing. too much. Yeah. yeah. So there oh my go. gosh. So and so what we'll do is we'll take a picture of you like kind of like holding it, but like letting the eyes peek out or something, mm-hmm. and you can like give the the tease of that on on your social media. <laughs> nice. We'll do that, and that's the first glimpse that anybody's going to get of the uh, of the black cat. Mug. Oh, so oh. Good. So follow us on Instagram. There you go. <laughs> so we have that. Um, Tino Evil again. You know they're coming in and they're doing our unofficial mm. shirts. They have, and I will show you offline here. Mm. Um, we, they they're going to do their their Midsummer Scream one always has the motif. It always has like the trick or treaters, the little kid trick or treaters. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So well, this year the three little trick or treaters are you know they're striking the the hitchhiking ghost pose and nice. the haunted mansion in the background cool. of Very them. Cool. And then of course they're doing the the Hall of Shadow shirt. And it's Tiki Terror with the big tiki's and the crashed airplane, and it glows in the dark because everybody loves glow in the dark shirts. That's so, so that's so our vibe. So yeah, we're we're Franco and his team there at, at Tino Evil. We love those guys, and they're fantastic partners. So that's all going to be on sale as well. And uh, we got some midsummer shirts that are official midsummer shirts that are in the awesome. in the hopper. So there's not going to be any shortage this year of midsummer scream specific merchandise. Very good. We need that. We need something to take home and put on the shelf and look at. She's staring at the mug like, yeah, I'm, it's She's, so yeah. damn. So there's cute. gonna be 499 of these <laughs> mugs available. <laughs> well, admittedly, I'm not a, a tiki collector. I, right. I admire them deeply, but I right. don't. I don't collect a lot of right. stuff right. these days. But I just, it's the ears are just too much. They're so damn cute. <laughs> <laughs> well, you get the crossover. You get the people that are like into tiki that are like, yes, please. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And then you get people that aren't necessarily into tiki, but they love midsummer. They love the industry. They love the community. Mm-hmm. They see that and go, okay, that needs to be on my shelf because that's really, it's just really so cute, cute, right? The, the the big, goofy, knowing smile of the Midsummer Scream cat. Yeah. That's yeah. like, you know, world famous now. I mean, it's just captured so perfectly. Yeah. So we're really excited about this. And so, so uh, yeah, so stay tuned. We're going to let everybody know, you know, on our social media how and when to, to buy these things and, uh, you know. We, we're deciding whether we're going to just like open sales there or whether we're going to do pre-sales online so you mm. can buy them and just show up with your receipt and just get your mug there. Okay. we got to work it all out that way. And uh, these are logistics that are, you know, behind the scenes production, always in always in, in play. Yeah. So we're figuring that out. Um, the, you know, as of this recording, the masks are done. They are stacked up and ready to go. Nice. These guys are still in production, so oh, okay. you know, God knows there could be some horrible world event that 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 holds them up in production. Oh, sure. But as of now, they're on track to be there with us at midsummer, and uh, so we we don't want to do like any pre sales unless we know for a fact we've got the pallets of these things. You want the inventory yeah. you know? before you start selling. <laughs> so, uh, so yeah, so it's uh, it's very exciting for us as we get into this final stretch. That's very cool. So is there, there hasn't been anything like this before where you have like a, a big, like specific merchandise thing besides the shirts? 
No, we've had, like we've had the shirts. Okay. We've had we've had pins, right? We've had Ouija, little Ouija boards. Oh yeah, you oh, yeah. know, yeah. Uh, were oh, made, yeah. um, but not anything like to this level of where we went like really outside the box. Yeah. Um, you know, David David is not really a tiki person. Yeah, he, he understands, he appreciates it, but mm-hmm. you know, when I said to him, I said we've got to have tiki mugs. There was, you know, there was a big question mark, like, well, are people Why? really going to buy these? I mean, are they really going to buy these? <laughs> And, and then when you stopped laughing, then you were able to tell. Well, them. no, it was it was a, it was a, it was a hard sell only in the fact that David is not of that world and he's right. not yeah. sure how much our fans are going to. But the small amount of people that do know about this across the board, it's like, oh my god, take my money, whatever, it is, <laughs> yeah. yes, please. So he very quickly understood. Okay, this is a thing, mm-hmm. yeah. and so that was. Uh, that was the driving force there, but it wasn't like like for like when I said I want this to to come to pass, it was not like uh, oh my god yes where can we sign let's yeah. send a check no it was it was kind of it required a little discussion and yeah. talking kind of with the your team case a little bit and uh, yeah because um, they're not cheap to make you right. know mm-hmm. so um, yeah it, it, but but the team fully understands and once the team saw these things. Like, Claire's reaction was the same as yours. Like, <laughs> this thing came out of the box, and Claire was like, okay, oh, my God, that's you're really cute. That's love. really, really cute. So, yeah. So, even, again, if you're not a tiki person, you're going to see this and say, well, regardless, that needs to be sitting on my on my shelf, because that's a really, really cool thing. So, what you need to do is you buy one of these, mm-hmm. and then you go over to the tiki bar and get your drink and pour it in there. You could. Oh, you know that's And then you happen. walk around and drink. You could. Although I, as somebody that would like buy this thing and cherish it, I would be afraid that I would fumble it and drop it on the floor. Surely. Yeah, yeah I may, I may right? like, put it in a And a suddenly you box. have 400 pieces of this really cool mug that you bought going home with you, right? <laughs> yeah. So, yeah. yeah. And, of course, the one that I would drop would be number 500. And there would yeah. be nothing else to buy. So, yeah. Oh, hey, so maybe just about get that. your Insta <laughs> pros. Get your pose with it. That's right. A documented yeah. evidence. Yeah. There you go. Yeah. That's why. Do we have any merch this year? Like any midsummer exclusive fun stuff? Um, I don't know. We did last year we had a shirt that was exclusive to Midsummer Scream and we're we actually just talked about this today with um with our new designer and um and producer that we want to get some specific images for Midsummer Scream. But um I don't know exactly what's gonna happen. I have to imagine there will be. We have to do something for our podcast, too. We have nothing at all. <laughs> and people are like, oh, I want a shirt. I'm like, well, there's Zazzle. You can, like, upload the top <laughs> Right, right, right. Yeah. <laughs> we really need to get on that, I'm sure. Yeah. But, yeah, I'm positive that Midsummer will have something about from the Decay Brigade that's unique to that year. Because yeah. every year we try to update it a little yeah. bit, make it a little yeah, bit yeah. more. But now that we you know, we know that there's, like, a theme globally, maybe we can apply that to the, some of the designs that we use because they haven't been sent to print yet. Okay, cool. So, yeah. That's something to think about. Well, you guys have a space. you got a 10 by 20 space. So we do. Yeah, you do. Thank you. So you got to have stuff to sell. It's going to be filled with all kinds of shenanigans. And something that's been really important to me, and I, there's this thing when dudes buy merchandise and they're buying for ladies, it doesn't always translate well, and they mean their, their best. But this year, I have opinions about the women's apparel and also some designs about some women's apparel. So right. I'm hoping to get right. a run of some lady cut shirts that aren't just a men's small, even though that's cute and we like it and we'll wear it. We need some shirts that are made to fit uh, girls. So yeah. um, we're going to have designs that are actually like women's fitted shirts for once. And then um, possibly even a design that's unique to that. Hopefully. That's awesome. Yeah. Again, it's still kind of flexible, but we have, I mean, we're kind of fortunate where we are able to, have those conversations you know we've been I mean, thanks to you we've been able to really grow this into something that people give a shit about which is a nice gesture so they want to buy our stuff that's, that's great. awesome and being yeah. able to have an outlet to do that that's nice it's yeah, amazing yeah. it really is amazing when you go somewhere um in my case you go to different you know haunt events or whatever and people are wearing midsummer shirts yeah you know? oh you see them all over the place yeah and it's really great because you just walk by and you know Sometimes we will hop out and say, hey, we're going to take your picture and put you on our social media. We're midsummer. But oftentimes we'll just walk by and be like, that's really awesome. Mm-hmm. That's, that's, that's a fan that, that loves okay. what we do. And mm-hmm. we just smile and, and just walk by a faceless in the crowd, you know, and just yeah. notice that as, mm-hmm. as we go through. 
But you do, you see it a lot during the Halloween season at Scary Farm and at Universal and yeah. Queen Mary. And you see it at all these different places, yeah. People are very proud to be a part of something like that. Because yeah, it is fun. such a big part of the industry. Well, we it's community, it's right? It's mm-hmm. When we created this, I, I was very serious when I said that we are going to give this community the show that it deserves. Because this community is very special, mm-hmm. and it's it's very near and dear to me, always will be, always has been, always will be. And so this is our way of giving back. You know, we we don't build a haunt. We don't we don't run a haunt. We don't you know have a we don't have a performance team. Mm-hmm. But we have Midsummer, and we we have a, a pretty nice little sandbox that we invite everybody to come in play in for a weekend. And boy, do that. And and we love being able to give back to our community this way. And we hope that uh, that just is a. Uh, something that the community wants for years and years to come. Yeah. I don't see that changing at all. I mean, people go to great lengths to plan trips to make sure that this happens. Yeah. I mean, in a big way, people plan for this like months and months and months in advance. We've got a lot of international yeah. folks well, coming last in. Year, Lots yeah. of international are coming in this year. We had people, last year we had people that became fans of the Decay Brigade from Australia and they bought hundreds of dollars oh, of merch and cool back that? to yeah. Australia. So we do. We have a lot of we have a lot more international folks cool. coming in this time. I know we have some international media coming uh, this cool. year to check it out. Um, a big first for me. My daughter's coming Ooh, for that's the first cool. time. Oh, that's right. Emily's never she's never seen Midsummer Scream, oh, so she's coming gosh. down from San Francisco to see what her dad does, and I I promise her she's going to be pretty mind blown. Oh yeah, wow. and I promised sure. you she's got a VIP spot for the show. So there you sure go. Yeah. So uh, yeah, that's a that's a proud dad moment for me. That's that's gonna be very emotional. Yeah, for I me. saw that she just yeah. started driving. Oh my god, it's <laughs> crazy! It's like okay, you can stop growing whenever you're ready, Em. Oh, dear. but uh, yeah. So so on a personal level, it's very it's very uh, unique for me. Yeah, as well. Um, yeah, to have Emily there is going to be fantastic. It's going to be awesome. And, uh, you know, I, I don't want to get really over emotional, but um, a year ago at this point, um, I lost my grandmother. Oh, yeah. And, uh, in fact, on July 5th, I lost her. Oh. And um, she was so proud of Midsummer. And um, so I know that she's going to be there, too. And oh, she's yeah. going to be really... Um, her thing is hot damn. She says hot damn about it. <laughs> and so she's she's gonna be stoked at, at, at how big it is and how successful it is this year. And so um yeah, a lot, lot of emotions. But, yeah. Uh, uh, it's no small feat that yeah. you pull this off. I mean, that's why I, I have all these technical questions that I'm not gonna ask because they're boring, but it's just it's just so much, and you have so much to be proud of. You absolutely do. It's pretty crazy. Yeah. It's great. And, and at the end of the day, it is, um, it's beyond satisfying. It really is. It's beyond satisfying. Um, like I said, we don't get much of a chance to sit back and just kind of like relax. Um, David and Claire tend to go on vacation afterwards. I tend to hide tail it back to Vegas. <laughs> yes. Because <laughs> I never go to Vegas. But, you know, I, I, I will go back to Vegas and relax and celebrate a little bit. But no, we're like, like I said, it's it's an 18-month process. So yeah. we're literally, we will have, you know, a break. We'll have a, very quickly, we have a, a post-mortem yeah. uh, meeting while everything is still fresh and the dust is still settling. And then we take like a month or two off from meetings. But that doesn't really ever stop because yeah. we're always in communication. So mm-hmm. whether we're hanging out at knots together or just going to dinner or whatever, we're always talking midsummer. Mm-hmm. So even though we don't have the gavel going, okay. We are now, you know, going to commence with our first point. No, the, 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 the communication is already going. Yeah. So it never stops. It's just kind of like this magma flow that yeah. just, just, just never ceases. So. Well, it's, it's part of you in a way where you, I imagine that you'll always be thinking about, you know, what new things, what yes ands you can throw in, like what, how you can make it better, how you can make it more efficient. But when there's something about having that sense of purpose yeah. that is, that's bigger than any of us yeah. where the mark that you leave is, is seen like literally globally. And like, yeah. that's, that's the sense of purpose where you're really excited to wake up and do that work. And yeah. yes, it's a lot. It's a lot of boxes to check, but you have your reason to wake up. You yeah. have your reason to push, to make the phone calls you don't really want to make. 
or, you know, make the decision. That's a really hard decision to make. Yep. Your, those decisions and those boxes being checked will be a, a significant impact for at least 30,000 people every year. Yeah, it's pretty crazy. It's, it's pretty crazy. It's a big deal. Yeah. You know? Well, Not next, next, out, year, next year is year five, so we know that we have a, a huge milestone coming. Yeah, so. that is a big milestone. So yeah. where can people get more information, buy tickets? Follow sure. you guys on the social. You bet. Stuff. So Midsummer Scream on everything. Instagram, Twitter, uh, MidsummerScream.org is the website. Mm-hmm. Tickets are now on sale. Uh, including Gold Bat, which is still on sale, but those Ooh. will sell out. Oh, you still have some left? We do. Oh, that, so you can that, get your that, Gold Bat. That's so the weekend can... ticket. So that gets you both days. It'll get you in an hour early before general admission each so day. So you show up and get that tiki mug. I, I, I have a right. question yeah. about that. Are you going to hold selling stuff like these precious little tikis until general emission? Probably not. You're gonna like that's, no, a, that's if, a perk if, of full Yeah, if, if we haven't, if we have not uh, done a pre-sale for like the mug mm-hmm. and have not already sold out of them, uh, no, it's going to be first come first serve because you know what we want to just sell the stuff, yeah. and not have it stockpiled. We just yeah. want it out, and we know that the most dedicated, the most fiercely dedicated fans are the gold bat holders. Truly. So they get first dibs Consider on this stuff, park. you know. Okay, uh, yeah. So they get an hour early each day. They're going to have their own access point, you know, their line in the morning, yeah. you know, is long. Yeah. Yeah. Um, we got to talk about that real quick, okay. about arrival. But also, um, it gets you into the Grim Grinning Gala on Saturday night. Mm-hmm. That comes with the gold bat ticket. Nice. So, and it gets you front of the line for most of the attractions in the Hall of Shadows, um, the big panels. It gets you priority access. You get your own line for those things. So, wow. uh, yeah, gold bed is really it's that's worth the, the way money. to go, man. That's 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 the way yeah. to go. Especially if you're coming from far away, you kind of have to do that yeah. Yeah. to try I mean, to absorb would, as much as you can. I would, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, so people are coming from a long way, and they're coming from far. They're coming from near. They're international. Some are staying there. Some are going to Uber in. Some are going to drive in. Yeah, get there early. I cannot reiterate this enough, and mm-hmm. I will pound this and pound this and pound this. There are more people coming this year than there were last year. And if you got there at 930 last year, you know traffic is not fun in Long Beach. And so if you are coming to a large-scale convention and you're arriving 30 minutes before doors and you're surprised that there is traffic and you're surprised that there is no parking, you are obviously very new to conventions. (laughs) Yeah. It ain't that kind of convention. So imagine going to Comic-Con and just driving in right at 10 a.m. and finding a perfect parking place, finding a great hotel, and just walking right in the door. Ain't going to happen. Same thing is happening with Midsummer Scream. The 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 downside, if you will, of of a rising success of the show is that more people are coming, and yeah. they're bringing friends, mm. and those friends have their own cars, <laughs> and so there are only a finite amount of parking spaces. There are only a finite amount of lanes on the roads. There is only one or two exits from the freeway yeah. to get. So it will back up. It's going to be bad. There is nothing we can do about it. People get mad at us, and it's like, well. Wait, you didn't build the city. We didn't do the infrastructure of Long Beach. <laughs> right. But we say, look, look, you know what? Plan ahead. Get a hotel within walking distance. Yeah. Walk to the convention center. Truly. If you're going to Lyft or Uber in, when the traffic starts getting heavy two blocks out, get out of the car and hoof it the rest of the two blocks in. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Bring Metro. There's a question whether Metro is going to be up or not oh. that weekend. So that's fun. So keep an eye on Metro. <laughs> Metro stops just a few blocks away and come in that way. It's a perfect way to come yep. in. Yeah. Just early, early, early. I, I tell people, get there early. Get there at 8 o'clock in the morning. Get there at 7.30 in the morning. Have no problem parking. Have breakfast across the street at oh, one yeah. of the restaurants. And then come get in line. There's a Starbucks over there. I mean, yeah. come, come get in line. We know that the queue is long. We know that the line to get in is bad. Everybody, the world that we live in now, you have to go through magnetometers. You have to be checked at security. Yeah. That is the world we live in. That's yeah. not the world we designed. But we're playing in that world. And if we want to have a large-scale show, we've got to play by the convention center rules. Sure. We don't determine, well, we're, we're going to have... <laughs> X amount of magnetometers and no more because we don't want to spend that money. No, there's only a finite amount that we can have. There's only a finite amount that they have. And well, I don't want to get into the weeds, but there is a reason that there are said amount of magnetometers up there that that is far beyond what what guests understand. They think that, well, you you should be able to move us in faster. Well, 
We are very keenly aware of that. So is the Long Beach Convention Center. We want you in because if you're standing outside in the hot ass line, you're not in spending money at the vendors yeah. or seeing what we've planned for 18 months. Yeah. We want you inside. We don't sit there wringing our hands like, Whoa, they're melting. <laughs> no, we, that's not us. We want you in. We absolutely want you in. And we work with the convention center every year to see what we can do to expedite that process. But the fact of the matter is, more of you than ever are coming, mm -hmm. so plan ahead. This is no joke. Yeah. It, it is a large-scale convention, and like any major convention, you're going to have a lot of traffic and a yeah. lot of logistical challenges as far as lines getting in. It could be hot. Yeah, it's August. Yeah. It's Southern California. It could be really freaking hot. We are aware of this. Mm -hmm. Again, there's not much that we can do about the weather. We try <laughs> to get you in as fast as we can yeah. because we don't want you. We love that you guys come dressed in cosplay and beautiful makeup and all that. And we know it's hot and we love you guys for it. So just bear with us. Our team does nothing on Saturday morning except really focus on how to get you all in. You really do. Like there's no yeah. one just standing around twiddling their thumbs. Everyone's doing something. We, we, we try our hardest every year to move that line as fast as humanly freaking possible to get people out of the sun because we know it's not fun. Yeah. yeah, It's not fun until you're inside. It's not fun, but then the moment that they come inside, it's like it never happened. Yeah, They walk in, and all yeah. they just see is the spectacle of what it is, and, and I think it's the people, you know, I, I think the majority of the people do understand that. If you go yeah. to different conventions, I've been to conventions, and we don't need to name names, but I've been to conventions where you're in line for an hour as they're figuring out how to get people in the oh, door yeah. faster. I mean, and it's just the way that that is in the convention world. There is a learning. I think curve. that we do. I think that we do pretty damn well moving that many people in. Yeah. yeah. Um, and Saturday, of course, is is the big one. Sunday, everybody pretty much has their tickets, so it's a lot faster load in, right? Yeah. yeah. But but we we are we we do our best, and you know, there's always going to be the person that says, "I couldn't believe it. It took 15 minutes for me to get in." <laughs> you know, right? And, but but that happens. Oh, of course. And you just have to read these things because at first. Of course, I'm sitting there going, oh, I have to respond. Oh, my God, I want a snarky response. Oh, so bad. I know. But you just can't because people just don't, they don't understand it. Because you know what? Maybe Midsummer is the only con that they go to. Maybe. Yeah. Right? Yeah. And so we appreciate that they are there mm -hmm. coming in for that. But, yes, no matter, we, we can move people in. Everybody will come in in 10 minutes, and somebody's going to say, well, I waited 11 minutes, and that really sucks. <laughs> so we're not coming back this year. It's just, it's grown too big. Yeah. I had to wait 12 minutes, so I'm not coming in again. And you know what? It, to, what do we say to that? I, we, thank you. We're glad that you yeah. came. We're sorry that you're not going to come back. You say yes, thank you. you know? That's all you can do. Yeah. We, we think that we do pretty damn good as far as getting people in and moving a lot of bodies. So we are very proud of that. We're very proud of our team. But we, again, never rest on our laurels about that. So please, everybody, plan ahead. <laughs> plan ahead, plan ahead, plan ahead, plan ahead. And Get there fun. early. Planning ahead for this kind of shit and making a weekend out of it is fun yes. in itself. Just because then you've got the nights it. afterwards to yeah. find something to do. If you're not going to the ball, yes. like there's so much stuff to do where you can really make a shindig out of this. Yeah. And you should. I mean, we do. We make yeah. a whole weekend out of it. And if you plan it properly, again, like we've said, you will never see all of it because that's the way that it's designed. Of yeah. course. Yeah. Once in a while, you see remarks like, oh, yeah, we showed up in the afternoon and we were there for like three or four hours and saw everything and left. It's like, so they were you at through. our convention because right. it certainly wasn't our convention. Yeah. So I guess it depends on, floor, on what but... they're there for. Right. Yeah. But to post just a blanket and say, "Well, we saw everything and left." It's like it's like if oh. people say, "Well, it was an okay show," and I'm like, "Truly, like, oh, okay, well, you didn't see everything." Yeah. <laughs> like, you don't know. <laughs> yeah, I don't know what show you went to, but but no, uh, I think people do understand that this is large scale, and yeah. uh, you know, for those that unfortunately underestimate, well, they learn the hard way. They do. Yeah. I mean, even my, my mom and her boyfriend came in, and they came in late one time, and they were like, oh, there's a lot of freaking people here. I'm like, yes. <laughs> yeah. it, I mean, but when we, luckily, we're able, we have our ways of, you know, scooting things along pretty quickly, but, like, not everyone has that ability to do that. Yeah. So. Even with really, me. I tell people, co-workers or whatever in the industry yeah. that I work with, I say, well, you know, I do this. We, we say, we now say it's the world's largest Halloween and horror convention. And, and people say, oh, that's nice. That's cool. That's cute. <laughs> and then they get there and they're like, sweet baby Jesus, this is really, what like the hell? And I'm, and, and I'm like, dude, I told you 
<laughs> and they're like, holy shit, this is no joke. Like, you weren't kidding. Like, yeah. Yeah, it's yeah. a major convention. It's the entire convention center. So it's a big deal. That's so funny. Like, so, oh, no, good for and you. They do, <laughs> and they do. People that know me, they're like, oh, that's great. Yeah, we're going to come see your little thing this year. And then they show up and they're like, oh, my God, I had no idea. That's and I'm so like, well, I told you. People do that to the show. Like, they'll come see it and they're like, okay, we'll see your little stunt show. And they walk away going, oh, my God. Right. <laughs> yeah. Like, it's so, a big deal. Yeah, the, the so dawning of realization is pretty yeah. amazing. To see it's kind of fun to watch, though, because then you're like, yeah, uh-huh, mm-hmm. yeah, you coming back? <laughs> That's right. That's right. So, and we're excited to have you guys. Thank you for having me tonight to talk about these things, and thank you guys for the continued support with the Gade Brigade. No problem. We love that partnership, and uh, don't see that going away anywhere. So uh, we're very, very excited that you guys are coming back for year four with us, three times yeah. a day, Saturday and Sunday. Oh, hell yes. We've there been working really hard and we work really hard for this. Like we realize how important, you know, and how freaking lucky we are that we are in the position that we're in. Awesome. I mean, we don't, again, resting on your laurels, like you can't, I'm like, you, you know how many groups are just sitting and waiting for us to fuck up so that they can come in and take her spot. I mean, the yes, list because blocked. they ask me every year. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> awkward turtle. God, but you know, truly, but, but yeah, yeah, yeah. Like it's it's really it's really true. important to us, and like the things that we've been able to accomplish because of it are, I mean, are immeasurable. Mm-hmm. So we're really lucky, and then I understand that there is an element of luck to that. But you know, it's also, you know, we're really grateful to be able to build what we have. And, you know, how it fits into building with what you have. Well, we're glad that we're all playing together in the sandbox. And yeah. uh, we'll see you in, uh, well, when you hear this, three, three weeks. weeks. Oh, Jesus. Yeah. Three weeks, man. Well, is there anything else that you'd like um, to add? I think that's it. Do you have anything else? No, that's it. I'm going to show you some pictures offline. And, uh, again, we're Midsummer Scream, midsummerscream.org. Uh, Twitter, we're on Facebook, we're on uh, Instagram. Uh, I myself, I'm I'm Rick West nine 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 on Instagram and on Twitter, yep. and I post a lot of behind the scenes midsummer stuff. And uh, see you on the interwebs. Yeah, and we're at Tales from the Fog, so you can see these awesome sneak peeks. That's right. Of the merch that we're going to be posting up with this video, or not video, I guess just podcast. The podcast. Yeah. <laughs> we're recording this. We are. You guys didn't know that. Oh, that was a <laughs> secret camera right over there. <laughs> I've been picking my nose the whole time. <laughs> Uh, and you can follow Veronica at Veronica Voices on Instagram and fuck Twitter. Yeah. Sorry. <laughs>